Who's that? Uh, uh, the guy that owns the place. Docs? Yeah. That was probably the old owners because uh, it's Gambino right. now. Okay. Are we doing that intro music at all? Or? No. <laughs> 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 well, we're here. Bonfire banter. NFL playoff special here. We got a fantastic panel. From our last NFL episode we did, about, it was a, it was right after the second week of the season. Yeah. Brandon was on. Yes, I was. So we're going to be looking at some things that me and Brandon <laughs> said, making fun of uh, our buddy Kearney, who was not able to make it out tonight, but was on the last episode. We're making fun of some of his predictions that he had made. Um, we have Mark Scanio joining us for the first time. Glad to be here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Absolutely. He's uh, He knows quite a bit about... NFL and, and as well about some Sports. gambling. And we're yeah. gonna be jumping on both. Um, and then Michael Lubin is coming back out. He's uh, you know, one of our mainstays now coming out anytime we need someone to jump on, and he knows a little bit about everything, you know. Hell yeah. <laughs> Renaissance man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean he won his fantasy football league, so he's yeah. gotta know yeah. a little gotta something. Know something. Well, he said he just said it and forget it. So I don't yeah. know how much you That's know, he, true. he's a good drafter, apparently. Yeah, hey. Yeah. <laughs> Five hundred dollars richer though, so yeah. spent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was just about what we got from uh, these stimulus checks, right? Spent. <laughs> yeah, spent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's give the people what they want. Let's just jump right into these, these bears here. Hey, who, who do we got off screen too? Tonight? Oh, yeah, tonight we have a fantastic little grilling segment we're going to be doing. We got Chef Jordan in the house, Bonfire Chef Banter's Jordan. Chef Jordan. Uh, he's actually going to be doing a little grilling uh, segment for us tonight. He's doing a rack of lamb with like mm. some kind of chimichurri. Some homemade. Yeah. He's serious Ooh. about the meat. It looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited yeah. about that. We also got uh, more brewing company actually gave us a couple of things to try tonight. So thank you, More Brewing Company, again. We got Appreciate Hush it. of the Night is a milk stout, mm, something to mm. keep us a little warmer on this cold night. And we got To the Trees, and that's an IPA, uh, both Moore's products. And shout out to Ross over there for hooking us up tonight. He's a GM at the Villa Park location. Uh, but check them out in Villa Park and Huntley. As far as the Bears go. We've, we know this opponent. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Playoffs. Surprise, we actually made it. So for, you got to say that first. <laughs> surprise, thing, we made it. The funny thing I was thinking about, though, is after week six, we're five and one. In our last 10 games, we won three, and we're in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And after so, last week, well, you back in the playoffs, it was kind of like, yeah. Eh. Yeah, you get smoked by your Thank division. You Thank we'll, you, 49ers. We'll, we'll yeah. Thank you, yeah. They get to see a different quarterback this time. Yep. So we'll, uh, we'll see what kind of scouting report they have on Mitch. Bust yeah. him in the ribs. Yeah. So we'll see. I, I mean, Mark, what are your keys to the Bears' victory here? If we're going to win this game, I know it's going to be. A <laughs> I tough mean, one. it's ball control for uh, first of all. You got to keep the defense off the field. You got to keep them well rested. I, I would think uh, run the ball. Something they they've actually done quite well the, the last, last three four games. three four oh, games. Yeah, they've absolutely. done pretty Remember, good. Gotta, finally getting the we got a top yeah. five running back. Gotta, yeah. It's all about time of possession, especially in the playoffs. Yes. Is, you know, keep the ball out of Drew Brees' hands. Kamara. You know, they got a lot of playmakers on that yeah, side. So. Thomas. It, it, that's the name of the game in the playoffs, unless you have like yeah. Patty Mahomes. Right? Well, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, when they want to have your running and, back, yeah. it's just like that's a nice little fun position we have on the field. Look at <laughs> yeah, that. we have a running sure. back. How's their defense? You know, is it, uh, they the decent? Saints. Yeah, yeah, they're they're up they're, and down. I mean, they've had mm-hmm. good week, good weeks, bad weeks. Uh, you know, they're kind of hit or miss. They're not. Um, they're they're definitely. I mean, you could score on them for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, the secondary is pretty good. Oh, yeah, they 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 had, they played well against the Bears the first time. So yeah. yes, but we're in the, in the dome, so that the advantage dome. them. And I don't know, did, did anybody does anybody know if they're going to have though. fans in the dome? Did, did does, I don't know New Orleans? Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't New know. Orleans. I know some of the some of the uh, teams are allowing fans. Some of them aren't. So I thought I saw a Facebook thing about someone I knew that was at the Bears game. This past, I think it was someone from York Furrier. I knew someone I that was, was at the, the York yeah, they, like the box seats in, yeah, in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. In the Packer really. Game. They were standing outside Soldier Release, or maybe there was some kind of viewing. Maybe party they were. Outside. Are they part of like the media? Oh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, I mean, they own York Furrier. It was the guy that owns York Furrier. Okay. It's, uh, helped us out with all the hats and stuff. Uh, and the giveaway that was a fantastic success, by the way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were. I, I saw that they had on. They went with some. Unfortunately, they wanted some Packer fans, which was the oh, only that, stain on, on this whole right. post. That they had. <laughs> but they had like an orange fur hat on, and the girl that was a Packer fan like a yellow fur hat on. Kinda, yeah. you know, what kind of animal has of, yellow fur? Oh, they just dye it, man. Oh. They get some mink or something. They throw some, Not worth uh, it. Paul Bunyan's here. Yeah, yeah, not worth exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, we got Paul Bunyan standing over here, <laughs> a.k.a. Chef Jordan. Yep. He's got a T-shirt on. He's got his bonfire banter uh, <laughs> apron on. So, Jordan, why don't you come in this yeah, middle? Yeah, come and say right, hello. Right, yeah, right yep. in the middle here. 
for us. Chef Jordan, the Chef master Jordan. of the meats. We're talking that Jordan's <laughs> going to get a couple of runs here. my meat at an early age. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to try to get you, and if you got to say something, you're going to have to speak in this mic a little bit, but um, we're going to give you a couple chances here for a while just to be our chef with no competition. But down the road, we're going to have some cook-offs. Are you feeling confident about that at all? Bring it on. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that's, that's totally sweet. awesome. That's fantastic really nice. stuff here. We're not <laughs> messing around bonfire banter. God damn it. We are legit. So what are you making for us tonight? So I'm doing um, lamb chops, French tip. And then I'm doing... What does that mean, French tip? You know? So, yeah. So lamb chops, they come in a rack. Yeah. So French cut or French tip is when you cut them into chops and then you scrape the bones off the back mm. of them so they're all like the bone is exposed fully gotcha so there's no meat left on the bottom of the bone so you can basically just pick it up like a lollipop i like meat lollipops <laughs> meat yep. lollipops it's my favorite kind of lollipop <laughs> i'm also doing roasted red potatoes rosemary okay and then i'm doing uh a chimichurri sauce on the Ooh. any Ooh. souffle not no souffle. Okay. <laughs> it looks like I'm baking a souffle. <laughs> now is the sauce hot? It, it smelled so like it's, it's got a kick so to it. It's, the sauce is uh, two jalapenos, but they're seeded. Okay. Even so they're, you get like, when I tasted it after I mixed it all together, it's like it gives a bite, but it doesn't burn your tongue. Okay. So okay. Like you can taste yeah. the jalapeno, but there's no like afterburner. Gotcha. So we, which is so you I mean, I'm going to eat it no matter what. Yes, it can yes, burn my yes. tongue off, and I'm still going to have some. So. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't yeah. really matter. We're yeah. trying it either no. way. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not picky. The chimichurri is basically fresh basil, fresh um, fresh basil, fresh oregano, uh, fresh pars- parsley, and some uh, white onion. And then it's the jalapenos. And then it's a little bit of red pe- pepper flake. And then it's white vinegar and olive oil. Okay. Nice. Sounds delicious. Well, that thank you for stopping good. out. We're going to do a couple of those segments. We're going to be popping him in. We're going to show you guys, uh, you know, what he's doing on the grill. We're doing it over some charcoal tonight. Um, so we're going to be stopping in. We're going to be Kingsford doing a little. Tech. Kingsford. Kingsford. Yeah. Thank you, Kingsford, Kingsford, for sponsoring us tonight and uh, supplying us with those briquettes. Fantastic stuff from you, Kingsford. Let me, um, I got a question. What's up? Back to the Bears. Yes. Yeah, so let's get back to the Bears. Win or lose, who gets fired? Pace needs to get fired. Regardless. Regardless, Ooh. I think the, the tough thing about like firing Nagy right now is you got a guy who's his first three years with the Bears and he's gotten us to the playoffs twice. I don't care what you say about that. I mean, he's sixty six percent. So you get into the playoffs. So you want to give the coach and the coaching staff one more year? Would you bring Mitch back or no? I think at this point you give Mitch a. The thing that sucks <laughs> is he played just good enough, in my opinion, to warrant a one year. You got a franchise tag. Put it right? out there. I don't know. If, it's it, a franchise tag. Does he does he warrant a franchise? It's twenty five million. Here's, here's what it really boils down to: Who can you replace him with? You can't. Cam right Newton. Well, it, I mean, well, you got Nick Foles. You got no. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you got Nick Foles is coming right? back. Woo-hoo. Nick yeah, Foles I mean, is coming back. He's under contract yes. for another year but or if, two. Yeah. If you get rid of pay, if you get rid of pace, you allow a GM to draft his quarterback. Yeah, I think, I think you draft one this year, no matter what. I, I, my opinion is, is if you go down to New Orleans and you beat them, everybody's staying. Everybody's staying. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you and you have to bring them back. And I'm kind of, I've been on the fence about Nagy and Pace, yeah. but I mean, if you go down to New Orleans as a ten point underdog and beat them, you gotta give, Everyone's you gotta bring them back. Their jobs. Everybody comes yeah. back. And I could kind of dig that. It's like you got it done. It's a put up or shut up league. Like, what have you done for me lately? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had a six game losing streak in the mix there, uh, and everyone has just almost lost their jobs mid season. But uh, the McCaskies aren't really known for doing that. Right. They've well, ever I mean, done it, actually. That being said, if, if they lose and get blown out, I, I think everybody's gone. You think Nagy's gone too? I think both. I mean, you can't bring in a GM, GM and not have him want to bring in his own correct. coach. I agree. I mean, I don't know if you guys so, think Ted the Phillips getting replaced. Ted Phillips, I heard, is either re- uh, retiring or I heard he's going to be gone. moving into a different, different, different yeah. So he will be out of the president role. Mm. Yeah. Um, happy birthday, Virginia McCaskey, 98 years young. Hell yeah, yeah. Virginia. <laughs> Woo! Jeez. Thank you, Virginia, for liking us on TikTok. We really appreciate that. Um, you have quite a bit of followers. <laughs> so they they get blown out. You blow up the team. Well, you blow. Yeah, you you need to get a new coach and a GM. I mean, you missed on your 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 number two overall pick, Mitch Trubisky. You missed on a lot of draft picks. Yeah. Well, but they did hit on a few. Yeah, I mean, late, the late ones. The, the, the late ones. The yeah, early I mean, ones Eddie missed. Jackson, you didn't late know. Pick. He, he Eddie, came off of a, a pretty serious injury. A femur break, I believe. Kevin, yeah. Kevin, yeah. Kevin yeah. White. Fourth round that year. Yeah. Hey, I had, I had high hopes. Kevin White. 
Yeah, I Kevin did White was very bad, but I don't think Kevin White was. Kevin White was was the previous regime. I, I, I want to say. I think that's pace. I think it was pace. I think it's pace. No, I don't think so. We'll have Adam to. We'll have to Adam have somebody Sheen. look at that Rob, one more. Rob, can you guys take a look for us and see? Because this is only Pace's which, third year, which right? Bears GM drafted Kevin White. You could also just take a look that at what year Kevin ago. White was drafted and see. I want to say Kevin White was like yeah. four years ago. Yeah. So. Because well, Nagy never I coached Kevin right. White. Yeah, I think, or maybe, it might maybe have not, been Fox, actually. It might have been the last yeah, year Fox, Fox was, was there, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't bring his name that up. That does make no. sense. <laughs> yeah. um, These years are all blood the, again, uh, especially yeah. after a 2020. What about yeah. the general manager that is from uh, the Chiefs, that the rumors yes, the Bears are B- supposed B- to go Borgonzi after? Borgonzi or something? No, yes. the, that's, the, that's their offensive coordinator, Biennemi, Eric Biennemi. No, there's a Borgonzi. No, he's there, like 75. He's like an executive. Yeah, they want him as a GM. Yes. Yeah. Ryan Pace. Ryan Pace did draft uh, Kevin White. Did Kev- draft Kevin White. That's okay. Kevin White. That's well, Mr. Yeah, that's Bisky. A, that was a really bad one. That's, yes. really bad. that's, that's Leonard thing. Fournette. I mean, not Leonard Fournette. Uh, you, Leonard Floyd. Leonard Floyd, yeah. but he's like playing Leonard better Floyd this too. year yeah. in, he just in, with the Rams. Yeah. Yeah. Ten sacks. Yeah. Ten yeah. sacks he got. I feel, I, everyone looks a little bit better when you got Aaron Donald in the middle and you got like yeah. a double, triple I, team. I don't know if you guys remember this. The Bears were one pick away from Aaron Donald. Were they? Yeah. They drafted him. I don't. A couple years ago. It was a couple years, about five years ago. He came out of Pittsburgh and. And uh, the Bears were the next one. We were just like, come on, let Donald yeah. slip to us and the Rams, obviously. Can you would imagine that? I don't know if we would ever get a Keem Hicks or if we already had him, but imagine a Keem Hicks and oh Aaron Donald. Oh, my Donald's God. Oh, my. You can't block him. Yeah. Oh, I mean. What, Aaron, do you do double team on both? I'll, I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. The best player on the Bears roster is a Keem Hicks. A Keem. I 100% agree. Yeah. I, I know everyone. Don't sleep on Roquan there. Smith. Oh, oh no, Roquan he might please. be pro bowler. Maybe third. Pro bowler he this year. Snubbed. He should have he been a pro bowler. hard. He's, this is his best professional season. Yes. Oh, yeah. He, he had did. over 100 uh, tackles. Uh, I forgot how many sacks. He's he a game had, changer. He's two. had a game. Yep. Where he just had two picks in a game. like Two yeah. picks, two sacks. And he's he's, he's gonna, not going to play this week weekend. Is he? Yeah, he, or he hasn't been practicing. Yeah, he hasn't been practicing. Him and yeah. uh, Mooney both have been not. Yeah. I love Mooney. Yeah, yeah. so this is going to be. What a surprise he is. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they were kicker. talking about it on the radio this morning that both those guys <laughs> are not gonna, yeah. probably not going to play. So oh, that's, that's, tough. that's actually really bigger than Mooney, to be honest, because, yeah. I mean, you need. You need defense. Yeah. yeah. You know who surprised me is like Anthony Miller. I really thought Never. when they drafted him out of Memphis that he was just going to be like. I thought he was going to be an all-star. I had a stud. They draft receivers that are. Try to put him at the number two spot, but they're right. three he's a, they're threes. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, let's they're, face they're it. Mitch is a yeah. Mitch is a one read guy. It's a Rob yeah. and it's a Rob yeah. or nothing. But it's a Rob yeah. or tight end. Basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tight end. Pretty or check much. down. Yeah. Tight end. Or check, this is the first year we actually played and used tight ends that I've seen. In, yeah. In the yeah. last couple of years, it's the first year that we've actually had serviceable <laughs> tight ends though. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I was a little skeptical. This I, like, year we brought both of those guys in, and Jimmy Graham had the second best touchdown total of his career. Yeah. This year. And then. And then Komet, who looked like he wasn't getting any playing time early on, yeah. kind of came on strong mm-hmm. in the, uh, the second part of the season and looks like a guy that Jimmy Graham has been helping him along. Yeah. And this looks like our franchise tight end for a while. Right. But I also, think you got yeah. that figured out. Also, I mean, Adam Shaheed was terrible, but he ended up getting a little bit of money down in he's, Miami. Actually, yeah, he did. He's he got a couple down there. He's he's got a so it's like, I don't know, maybe <laughs> right. it was Nagy, the system. It's but weird to see when you take away the offensive play calling from Nagy and give it to Bill Lazor how much better you utilize the talent on the team. And yeah. that's what we're seeing in the yeah, second I half of the season. Yeah. I love the, the, uh, the, the first couple weeks of Lazor weren't that great, though. They were. Or, uh, was, yeah. I think the first better. one was the first against week, the Vikings. The very the first, first one. The very first bad. one. Yeah, it was like, it looked yeah. like York High School. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was so bad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's better. You know, the coach should focus more on clock management, yes. players, and stuff there like that. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot yeah. of strategy. Not everybody, and, and, and not everybody kudos can do to it. Nagy to just say, all right, I'm going to give yes. up the play calling. Right. I, I think when you know your thing. job's on the line, you just kind of do whatever you can and what's best for the team. And so. it's hard to, like, block out all the chirping in your ears. Right. Like, right. You're losing and that kind of losing right. streak. People are like, the media, you the need Chicago to give up play media. calling. Yeah. Like, you're going to hear it. As right. much as right. you want to try to separate yourself from that, you're going to hear it. Dude, let's face it. The Chicago and New York media is on. You're expected to win. Philly, too. Well, yeah, but They're not expected to win as much, but they're Yeah, but they're yeah. Especially, much, but yeah. They're yeah I mean, the two yeah. big Future markets. Quarterback. <laughs> no, I don't. Let's, let's they, see the, the cool. matchups. So, we, okay, so I'll read off the matchups here. Let's see what we got. So, we got the Colts and the Bills, the Colts and the Bills well, which got, I think is a good that's game. That's a noon game, game tomorrow. Think, that's a noon uh, game tomorrow. Saturday. And I'm taking the Bills all day. I yeah. think I'm going to the world. It says people from Indianapolis. We'll, we'll go through well, all of us and ask yeah. the games here really quick, right. and then we'll take a little break. I mean, are we, do you want to do straight up who's going to win the game? Let's just say who's going to win. We could talk about the g
Buffalo Bills. I'm taking the Bills. I'm taking the Bills. Okay, let's come back the next way. Rams, Seahawks. Who are you going? Seahawks. I see. I'm. This is the best game of the week for me. The Rams and the Seahawks. You got a good defense. You got a, a good offense. And is Goff playing? No. Are you sure? He's, he's, he's he had a surgery he on had his a surgery. Thumb. That's the thumb. key. I'm going to say. Wait, is it his? Not his throwing that, that, hand, is it? What's that guy? He's from the CFL. Uh, I think Don't it is. Count his him out. He's, he's actually little, decent. I know. Yeah, it's a I CFL. saw him a little yeah. bit last yeah, week. Yeah, he was running the ball a little bit, but dude, you're talking about NFL playoffs, and I know there's no fans. I agree. It's a totally different ball game. I got. It's only his second career start. So I'm going to take. Because I want to get things right here, I want to you know make sure that you know I, I win this whole thing. Uh, <laughs> picks. I'm going to go Seahawks. I think it's a smarter pick. Lubin. I'm going Seahawks. Their defense is good, and Russell Wilson's just it's been wishy washy, but he's a baller. He's Russell Wilson. Yeah, he's the most underrated quarterback in the NFL. I yeah. I don't know if he's underrated anymore. To be honest with you, never got MVP votes. Never got MVP. That's true. Yeah. yeah, never. Not even one. Not even vote. one. In the middle vote. of the Who's season, that? in the middle Russell of the season Wilson. this yeah, year, crazy. everyone was saying he was winning it, and then he had like three games where he just didn't play up much, to Russell yeah. Wilson level. It's like they play down in the competition. But then you had a 43 year old Tom Brady throwing 40 touchdowns. It's hard to. I mean, and you got a Patrick yeah. Mahomes, and you got a Patrick Mahomes, and you got a yeah. Aaron Rodgers out there. <laughs> yeah, so it's tough. This one, I had mine in the. Oh, okay. Mug. Um, okay, so we're all saying. Uh, well, I, didn't, touch, I didn't touch, pick touch. yet. Oh, go. Sorry, my pick. Uh, I hate to go all chalk, but I, I like the Seahawks as well. Yeah, I think okay. so too. Uh, you got Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, here in the DK Metcalf. Ooh, yeah, that guy's awesome. yeah, DK Metcalf's a freak, yeah. absolute yeah. Yeah. freak of Just nature. Just cut yeah. straight, <laughs> straight up cut. So tall, fucking long, fast, and can right. jump out the gym. Yeah, it's yeah. like everything goes football cards. Yeah, DK's gonna do some stuff. Yeah. Um. Hopefully, he stays healthy his career for the most part. Being that big, it's, it yeah, helps. He's putting up Calvin Johnson numbers. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he looks yeah. like Calvin Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> um, Probably faster. Mark, we'll start this one with you again. Bucks, Washington. Now, one thing I want to say is on our first episode of the NFL uh, that we did two weeks in, we had talked about, like, mm. did Elk Smith get that spot as, like, a sympathy roster spot? And we were like, yeah, probably yeah. because you want that halftime rah rah speech from that guy. Like you keep him in the locker room for those reasons. But yeah. then, and now this guy but then he is took starting. It. He took starting. It. And I know he hasn't been Aaron Rodgers, but, but been, he has been better. He had his best right. yardage game of his career. Right. In a game a couple weeks ago. Yep. And he's gotten them into the playoffs on that leg after a leg that they thought he was going to die. If, yeah. They're going to take the leg. If you guys, I'm, I'm assuming you saw the E60. Absolutely. If you haven't seen we the E60, about it on the last you, you have to. It. You have to watch it's it. It's a I tearjerker. Mean, he almost lost his leg. He almost lost his life. And it's and, and if I was his wife, I would never let him play again. Oh, I don't know why she, he's playing, but and she's so kudos to him. He's got right. he's got big big balls. Yeah, he does. He, he's got a bunch of little kids, and yeah. I respect him as a man for saying he wanted to play his contract out too. I think right. He they give a lot of money. Co- yeah. Part of the contract. And, yeah, At the end too. of the day, it's like you, you don't let people tell you you can't. You fight, and I think that's a great thing for kids that are watching. You know, there's kids that get injured, have injuries like that at lower levels, maybe not that severe, but you have a bad injury. You know, you kids up. or teenagers, yeah, this might give up. Yep. And right. you watch something like that, it's inspirational. Do you we know? know if Alex Smith's playing? Alex Smith will be he's playing. Gonna be, yes, he's he going to start. Starting, yes. I think he's starting uh, that game. I, I mean, okay. if it starts with me, I, I'm going to still say more chalk. The Bucks, the Bucks are going to win the game. I agree with you. I, think uh, I, I know it's a big number. Them. It's hard It's hard to pick against them. They put up like 50 the defense last week. could keep it close. <laughs> they put up 50 uh, the last Washington's week. defense. Yeah. But Tom Brady, just too much Tom Brady, yeah. too much of that offense. Yeah. And, 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 if, and if Alex Smith gets hurt, who do they got? I mean, they're – they're in trouble. Is Dwayne Haskins still no, he's, uh, not <laughs> the league, he's not on the team. I don't know where Dwayne Haskins is at this point. He's probably at the strip club again. <laughs> yeah. so. He's trying to get a bouncer job. Right. Yeah. He could yeah. probably get a bouncer job at a strip yeah. club. And he could. Around he's DC. a big big dude. I've heard they need more security around D.C. Yeah. No, there's nothing going <laughs> on maybe, there. Really. Maybe a little. Maybe a little. <laughs> okay. Anyways, let's move on from that before anything you else. You guys happened. all taking the bucks as well? So, yeah, no. What are you taking? I'm, I'm taking the heat. He's going to take the I, underdog. I, I want it. Washington. I want that feel good story. Okay. Hell yeah. I want, I respect Tom I Brady, but I feel like you knock him around a few times. He doesn't, he's not as mobile as he once was. Right. He was never And that. I yeah, want yeah. that well, I, losing record team to just win one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, I respect the want, else. but do you really think that? My wallet, win? my wallet says no, my heart it says yes. yes. Okay. So that's fair enough. Because okay. I want the winning lottery numbers, but it ain't going to happen. Okay. I'm going to go. I love the Washington story. I love Alex Smith. So Washington I'm going to go with team? the Bucks because the Bucks are definitely going to beat their ass. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and then what do you got? Chase here? Young was talking. Bruce Arians responded. He's going to stick it to him. 
Phil Mr. Good is going to. Oh yeah, he's going to take it to him. Yeah. Phil Good story, coach with the uh, with the coach fighting cancer through Ron the Ron Rivera, th- Ron Rivera mm-hmm. fighting cancer through the season. Alex Smith, you root for him? Yeah. Not this weekend. Hey, football team, you guys did a great job. You got into the playoffs. Fantastic yeah. story. See you next season. Great job for <laughs> keeping on Alex. Smith I heard they because... might keep the football team name for a few years or forever. I, I I'll don't tell know. you one thing: it doesn't sound that bad when they're talking about it on like, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you got you know the Washington yeah. football team." Oh, yeah. I just like when people say, "Well, you know, you got the Bucks and you got the football team." It just kind of sounds <laughs> well, cool. But if you watch it on, pa- if you see it on me. paper, it's. it's- WFT, WT. and you get it confused, almost. you think it's WTF, you know? I thought someone made a joke the first yeah, time I saw Yeah, I'm like, what is WFT? Like, what, yeah, it was like, what the fuck are they doing in the yeah. playoffs? Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's actually just yeah. the shortened <laughs> version of Washington football team. Um, okay, so we're all, except for Lubin. Lubin's taking the Washington football team. Uh, we're all taking the Bucks. So. Can I make one comment about yeah. the NFC East real quick? A joke? Uh, I, 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 oh. They're well, obviously a joke, but I, something I found out the last couple of days are the, the, the New York Giants fans are the biggest babies. I don't know oh, if, you, crying if you saw about them on social yeah. media. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Look, hey, I understand what the Philly what Philly did was wrong, but you won six games. You went six and ten. Yeah, and you're crying for a playoff spot. You get the hell like, out of here. If you at least go eight and eight, or you know, yeah. seven, whatever. The Dolphins I mean, are not sitting there with ten and six and ten. watching from the other yeah. side. Yeah, of yes, they are. So, just, but I was two, just like, two, these two, Washington two. fans were like coming, or the Giants fans were coming at me, and I'm like. You guys watch the same Giants yeah. team I did yeah. all season. The Bears yeah. What did you deserve? Yeah. yeah. Why do you think you deserve to be in the mix? I, mean, don't I don't get me think wrong. we deserve think to be in the mix. They got a great head coach. I like the you know the inspirational thing yeah. and what he said at the end. But I mean, dude, maybe next year. You know, yeah. I mean, come on. You got Daniel Jones. You got Saquon. He got injured yeah, at the beginning he got of the season. Yeah. Against the Bears. Bears ripped his ACL from yeah, his body. They need <laughs> offensive line help, and you know they'll they'll be there eventually. They'll be all right. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, Browns, Steelers. I'm going to go out of order a little Ugh. bit uh, because we're going to talk about the Bears last. But we'll we'll go – actually, we'll go to the next one in order, actually, in time they come out. So we'll say Ravens, Titans. Start with Brandon here. Going Ravens. Taking the Ravens Ooh, there. 0-2 oh, oh. Lamar. Um, uh, he, gotta, he has to win one. He got to show me something. <laughs> okay. So, so, yeah, he got to he gotta show me something. It's mainly you believing in Lamar. <sighs> I believe it. in the – I'm believing in Lamar – in that defense. Okay. We'll take it. Let's so go. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that the Titans win this one. I love controlling the ground and guess what? The Ravens <laughs> can control the ground game too. I'm not saying they can't. They're carrying the beast though. Give me King Henry. Uh yeah, yeah. feeling real good about the way he gets late season. He's healthy and He's the kind of guy when he's been beating you down all game long. He's gonna have 50 yards in the first half. He's gonna have 150 in the second half. Um, so I like those guys well, when you're in a close game like that. Baltimore and you know the Titans head to head. I don't think it's gonna be a very uh, high scoring game, and I think you get that that ability to control the clock in the second half of the game with Derrick Henry. I, I think that's the um, the you know the factor there that ends up winning them the game. All I need is Lamar Jackson to have to take a shit in the fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah. He goes take his shit, come out, and he's yeah. gonna be balling again. Put some Metamucil yeah, that, in his like, uh, that's Gatorade all I need. or something. That's Fiber. all I need. What about Trace McSorley? <laughs> He, 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 he came in for a player. Yeah, yeah, then he got hurt. Then he got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, he was getting injured as Lamar was running back. back out. Out. He was pulling yeah, guys so, <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, so let's go to Lubin here. Ravens, Titans. Uh, look, I love Lamar Jackson. I just, uh, I think the, the coach for uh, Rabel, Rabel, right? Rabel. Like Rabel, yeah. I think he is uh, very good Yeah, and very underrated. And how do you bet against Derrick Henry yeah. and that run game? <laughs> and let me tell you something, Baltimore's defense is great. They're good. Great. Yeah. Not as good as they've been in the Brian past. Brian versus Lamar Jackson, it's no, a no-brainer who's the better quarterback. However, I just still think Tennessee's going to pull it okay. off. I okay. really do. They play I mean, well I would really, the last couple of I'm years. not going to be angry with my if I'm wrong because I like Lamar Jackson. I want him to do good. I kind of want him to do good, I just too. I don't yeah. see it this playoff scenario this, this right go now. Around. Okay. And then Mark? Yeah, it's going to be too much Lamar Jackson, I think, in that game. I think he, he's going to uh, pull through. And, you know, this is, what, his third third season being in the playoffs and first two didn't go so well. I think this this third time it's around. It's time. Uh, it's his time. Hey, Jordan, give me a Miller light. And, it, and it's, it's kind of a light. kind of a comeback because they played each other and, and they got boat raced by uh, Tennessee in the playoffs last year. So, yeah. you know. Payback I mean, a little bit for Baltimore. Mm. I think it could be a close game. I, I think the game's in Tennessee, and I think Baltimore is actually a, a, a favor, favored in 
So it is. Let's see here. Yep. It's got to be so like Baltimore two and a half. Favored by three. Three. It's yeah. mi- minus three. So they're favored. Yeah, by they're three. favored by three. Yep. And it's at yeah. And I want to see it Titans. opened up at four at and a half. I, I mean, I could see That's Baltimore. Interesting. That I could see on the road. On the yeah, road. I guess the road it doesn't, doesn't really doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Nobody's there. Um, but I, I definitely, I think Baltimore wins, but not by much. It's it's going to be a close, be close. game. Yeah. Maybe an end end of the game field goal. And they ha- who has the best field goal kicker in the world? Baltimore. Uh, are you sure not Cody Parkey on the Cleveland Browns? Oh, no, Cody Parkey. I'm 100 percent sure not Cody Parkey with the double <laughs> with the double doing. I cannot oh wait God. to see the Browns come down to it and watch Cody Parkey's knees just shaking. shaking. You think the Browns are going to get that close? And then the part. The oh, we're, we're coming. Or time that next. Excuse next. me. Parky will be on the Today Show again oh, on yeah, Monday, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, crying. I got paid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, he did. Okay, Mark, let's start back with you. Actually, Lubin, we'll toss it to you this time. You were okay. about to bring it up. Browns Steelers. Oh, take it. God. If anyone picks the Browns to, that wins this game, what's he here? Five receivers. They haven't played in five games or five uh, five days practice. You got those running backs, though. Uh, they have great running backs. The receivers backs. are back, though, now, aren't are they? They, 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 they had to have been because they were out for I, COVID a couple weeks Higgins ago. Higgins is back, Higgins, I believe. They're, they're all back. Yeah. yeah. All of them are back. I mean, you obviously OBJ, but he's been out for oh, a while. Yeah. 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 So I, you still got Landry. I, look, I I I like the Browns feel-good story. Just like I said, Hart Browns. Wallet says Steelers. But you're going to go with the wallet on this one? Uh, ta, 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 ta. Can't rush it. I'm going to say can't rush excellence. I'm going to say it's going to be very close to about the fourth quarter. And then for lightning in the bow, Ben Roethlisberger is going to be how he was the first 12 games of the season yeah. and start to get back. And Juju is going to save the day. Okay, okay. So you are taking the Steelers I'm there. taking the Steelers. I'll go to me on this one. I'm going to take the Browns. I, I think that the Steelers are on they're downtrending, and I think that the Browns are on the uptrend, and I think they got a lot of momentum. I think they're excited. They've got this uh, city uh, playoff bid for the first time in 18 years. <laughs> I think they, they run straight <laughs> off of emotion, and I think they win this one. I don't know how far they go deep into this, this bracket, but I don't like the trajectory of both teams, and I – at least I don't like the trajectory of the Steelers the last okay. couple weeks of this season. I haven't liked what I saw. Oh, I forgot to mention, yeah. the Browns do not have their head coach. Yeah, and they have, yeah. they're have they out without a couple coaches. Their offensive coordinator yeah, the, is gone, too. Coach makes a difference. I mean, yeah. I'm sure that they could do some kind Stavansky, of teleconference. Something yeah, there's got to be something they think. There's got to be something that they could get these guys in talking, but I don't know. They were talking about moving the game. There's no way they could move the no. game. Sunday night, <laughs> no. prime time. Not a chance. Uh, I mean, it would be cool to see a game on Monday or Tuesday. That would but be kind of cool. Then if whoever wins kind of gets screwed for yeah. Yeah, next exactly. week and COVID it year, man. Up. Yeah, yeah the COVID year. year. Everyone kind of knew it was Yeah, it they, they probably what they should have done is is had a week break. Uh but you know, it's hard that's even kind of hard to do. Yeah. You know, just for this year, but So then Brandon, let's go to you. Brown Steelers. It's easy. Steelers. They can't Steelers. they can't run the ball, but they got too many receivers that you have to guard. Uh TJ Watt's going to play. Baker doesn't spread the ball around well. You take out just pass rush them, take a, take away half the field. Steelers got too many weapons. Agreed. Okay. And then let's go over to Mark Brown Steelers. I'm gonna go with Justin on this one. I'm gonna say the Browns. Uh, I know. <laughs> I, like it. I, I was I was hard hardcore on the Browns earlier in the week, and then yeah. once I found out they're gonna be missing their coaches, I've kind of leaned off of them a little bit. Yeah. But I'm gonna still say the Browns. Uh, you know. Pittsburgh, they've already they've kind of had their chances there. Mm. I mean, they still got young talent. Don't get yeah. me wrong, but with Ben getting a little older, I mean, this could be his last year. Yeah. I mean, they they have not played well the last five games down the stretch. I agree. You know? I agree. Yeah. So Almost I mean, yeah. in Cleveland, you know, you know would you put money on the Browns? Like I I would. I, yeah, I would honestly. I mean, we'll get to that probably next segment. Mm. But yeah, we'll talk a about six point the, dog. Yeah, I are. like Cleveland. I think Cleveland. It six started points. at like Ooh, four, yeah. four and a half, and it went up obviously because they're going to be missing their coaches. But hey, these are professional ball players. I, I definitely, yeah, yeah coaching is important, but they're they're going to be ready to go. They're going to be ready to play. That city's hungry. <sighs> so, all right, and then last game's Bears. Without further ado, yeah, uh, the Bears, and I'll start off by <laughs> saying the Bears. But they probably won't win. <laughs> but I'm going to pick them right here for you guys on Bonfire Banter. I won't be betting on them, and I won't be holding my breath waiting for this win. But I'm going with the Bears. Brandon, what are you doing? If it was Saturday, I would have said the Bears. Why they, Saturday? Of Kamara. Because Kamara wouldn't have oh, played. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. And then Michael Thomas would have. Yeah, well, Michael Thomas is still up in the air. He's still I know up he in the air. the other day. Yeah. 
Drew's old. We seen what their backup could do. You, you can't count on like Drew getting hurt and then Taysom Hill coming in Just and yeah. looking like ball. trash. He we, <laughs> right. pretty good. he looks pretty good. Yeah. yeah, I like Taysom, but I'm still gonna say the Bears. Let's go. Bears by three. Lubin, what do you got? <sighs> I will always bleed Bears blood. <laughs> yeah. Today we die <laughs> with the Bears. <laughs> the Saints come up. Uh, it's going to be a blowout. Oh, a blowout. In the first quarter. Whoa. I'm telling you right now, I feel it. It's not going to be good for the Bears, and they're just going to be chasing the whole fucking game. Okay. I hope you're wrong. Okay. I hope I'm wrong, too. Man, I wrong. really hope if, I'm wrong. If we, chase, if we chase the whole game, do you put in uh, Nick Foles in the fourth, fourth quarter? Nope. No. Absolutely not. I mean, he—that's yeah. what we did at the beginning of the did season. You see came what he back did the other day when they brought him in for like the last series. Yeah. He threw a pass three yards, and the receiver was ten yards away from him. <laughs> I think that I think that he it depends it on him. how it goes. I think that if they're protecting the quarterback well, and like Mitch is missing open receivers, and there's like opportunities being missed, then maybe. But if all year it's been can't protect the quarterback, so putting the guy that's less mobile in there doesn't make any sense to me unless there's an injury involved or Mitch gets hobbled or Mitch needs or to have at least 60 the yards rushing and they he's missing open throws. Mitch needs to have right. at least 50 see. yards rushing to win this game. It's last week I watched that game, I roll the pocket, he's looking down the field, just run it. Give me give me 10 yards, give me 8 yards slide. <laughs> when he when he does that and move the chains, it makes a big difference. It makes it, the defense it, have it, to account yeah. for him. When he wants to play quarterback and be paid Manning, you lose. But when he wants to be Jake Plummer and roll the pocket, Ooh, Jake Plummer, yeah. wow. good call. Yeah. That, 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 that old Denver, <laughs> that old Denver offense where you read half the field with a good arm, you roll out, cut the field in half, you got three levels of target. That's what he is. Yeah. You, you have the ability to run. He has to run the ball. You got a good running back behind you, like you said, like we said earlier, control the clock. Run the ball, Mitch. One, two, read, check down, take off, run it. Yeah. I think that's yep. an insult to Jake Plummer. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Mitch doesn't have a two read. It's a one read and then run. It's, yeah. I mean, so I yeah. yeah. I'm going to start by saying right, this go. before I make my pick here, is, yeah. first of all, Mitch Trubisky is 10 times better than Nick Foles. And I'm not saying Mitch Trubisky is great by any means. But he is, yes. Okay, on the contrary, you look at the Saints. Their second string quarterback is better than both of them. <laughs> and their third string quarterback is probably just as good as both of them. <laughs> James, yeah. James, James Winston. Yeah. The third stringer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, with that being said, I'm going to pick the Saints, and okay. I'm going to pick them by a lot. A yeah. lot. So, oh, I say my they'll win 17 points say, before the Bears even score. A lot. I'm going to say a the lot. Bears yeah. lose. No, I'm going to say the Bears win. I mean, 31 <laughs> to 27. But um, the the score most likely in my mind be Saints 35 Bears. 17. Seven. Oh my okay, god. Okay, yeah, I, I could see that a little my, bit more. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I'm going to just do do race, yourself but... a favor and keep your wallet closed oh, on that game. <laughs> I'm not betting on them. I said that. I'm not betting on them. Yeah. What's your final prediction for the Bears game? Oh, it's Saints. I just give me a score. I'm curious. Oh, score. I mean, the Saints could definitely score. I could see like 38 20. Yeah. That, I got 38 I'd say, 21. I'd say 34 Something 12, like unfortunately. Yeah. All right, well, we're hoping that uh, it's a little more optimistic on Sunday at 3.40 p.m. But um, we'll be right back. we got a bunch of stuff coming up. We're going to be trying Chef Jordan's uh, lamb chops. We're going to be doing some uh, beer tasting. Um, And then I'm also going to be coming back to you with Uncle Bad Examples picks on all these games. So signing out for just a moment, Bonfire Banter. Be right back. Cheers. All right, we have Chef Jordan here. He's going to be putting our lamb chops on the grill. So, Jordan, tell us what you're doing. What are you doing here? So, right now I'm getting the oil on the rack. So, I'm going to oil the rack here. Okay. And that's not, it's going to make the lamb chops not stick. It's going to burn, though. It's going to burn. You got to watch out for the burn. You got to watch the burn. We know that, we know all about the burn here on Bonfire Banter. We're not afraid of the flames. So, we got to talk to Jordan about a little prep. We already kind of talked about the chimichurri sauce that he's uh, done for this little baby. But now we're throwing them on the grill. So how long are you going to grill these babies for? How long do these take? So basically, I'm going to sear both sides of them. It shouldn't take too long. Okay. And then I'm going to toss them over there on the cool side. And, and let them kind of hang out? sit on there for about five minutes. Because that was one thing I was asking you was I didn't understand that. Uh, I was like, oh, you got all the, the coals on one side. But that was yeah. kind of on purpose, huh? Yeah, so it's kind of it's like a two-part grill. So one side's searing, and then the other side is 
is going to be kind of just like the cooking in the interior. Okay. Are you basing it with that chimichurri, or is that just a topping no, at the so end? No, that's just the topping at the end. Okay. So once it's done cooking, I'm going to plate them, and then I'm going to put the chimichurri sauce on there. I'm going to leave a few off, because I don't know if anyone's going to not want it. So, but yeah, but yeah. that's what it's going to be. Sweet. So how long do you think these babies got to sit? Not long. Okay. Probably a minute or two on each side, just to get them brown. And then, are you hitting them with anything? Did you hit them with anything like season them? I got salt and pepper. The salt and pepper. Yep. Salt okay. Salt. Nice. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here on our grill. Take a look at these babies. You got them wrapped with tin foil. What's uh? So what's the salt behind that with the bone? So that's the so the bone doesn't burn like I was talking about earlier. Okay. So we got to wrap them with tin foil, and then so the bone doesn't get all charred and nasty. So what is, keep the bone fresh. So a little. Is that easier to eat and stuff? Yeah, it's easier to eat. Gotcha. All right, sweet. Well, we got our bonfire barbecue first segment here. We're looking forward to trying this with maybe some more brewing company beers we got here. So Chef Jordan, Bonfire Banter, signing out. Yeah, Jimmy and, and oh. Jimmy, jumped on my, Jimmy jumped on my fucking softball right. team this Let's year go. as a fill-in. No. Nope. But yeah, so Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy had jumped on my fantasy team this year, and we had tried to get Pat out for tonight, but he has had a new baby. And, yeah, uh, yeah, that's kind of hard. So with he the was misses. like, "Yeah, I'm gonna kind of stay away from this yeah. kind of stuff." I'm like, "All right." And then Shawnee Pat's on Old Sport as well, uh, but he's in Germany. He just moved to Germany for do you so know what like, for? By chance? I don't know. Uh, um, he was afraid of the democracy that oh, we have. Probably, no, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> totally a joke. Either. I have no idea why he moved there, Shawnee Pat. Um, so I think we're back, right? We're live? Yes. We're good. Okay, perfect. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, we got a couple different things. This is going to be a real busy episode. We're going to try to try some food, some beer. We're going to be doing a lot of Bring things. Bring it on. Yep. But I wanted to start with Mark here. And I've always – I have this, like, sinking feeling in my gut when I lose money, like gambling. And it's the only reason why I can't – like I just like the sickening feeling. I can't yeah. handle losing. So, yeah, so, so I like, started losing at a young age, <laughs> so I'm kind of used to it. Uh, so tell us about – my biggest thing is, like, a guy like you, you got to be going – there's certain trends you like to see that make you want to bet on a game. What are those kinds of things? Yeah, so tips. so that's actually a great question. And, and a lot of it is what – the lines come out. The, obviously, the Vegas, they make the lines. Yeah. What I like to do is before Vegas even makes the line, so I'll just see the matchup. I won't even look at the line. And, like, let's just say Bears and Saints, for an example. Mm. Okay, in my mind, I see, okay, the Saints are going to be at least an eight, nine-point favorite. Yeah. I think they're now, 10 now. They're 10. Yeah. <laughs> it, now, when the line comes out, if the Saints are 8 or 9 or 10, that the, I know the line is right. Okay. Now, if the Saints would have came out and only been a three or point – three or four point favored, that's a trap. That means I, in that situation, I would say, okay, the Bears got a legitimate shot. So okay. you kind of go against the – because the money – Vegas is always trying to get the lines to go where they're going to get equal money on each side. Yeah. But obviously <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, – they make they, they make certain lines where they try to get people to bet a certain way. Yes. Now, a lot of people like to bet favorites. So usually, you know, obviously if you go with underdogs, you're going to make – make money in the long run because everybody okay. bets favorites. Gotcha. So, and Giant in the NFL, public. you're when they have fans, you're a three-point favorite at home regardless. regardless. And that's not playoff, that's not anything that's so just, just no, just just so that you get three points just for being at home in the crowd. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you're automatically going to be favored like a team like Jacksonville yeah, and Chicago. Fans fans the Bears in, were in Jacksonville. favored there. Technically, the Bears were a seven-point favor or but something in Jacksonville. You would call it a ten-point, but favorite. it would be ten. Okay, yeah. They, I so, get what you're okay. yeah, exactly. So if the Bears were at home, they would be ten. Yes. If that makes sense. Okay, or thirteen. <clears throat> no, they would have been well because they were seven, seven on the road. Okay, and then add the other three, they would have been a ten, a ten point favor in the beginning because now they're at ten. Had they been at home, they'd be back at seven or something like that. No, yeah, had they been at home, they would have been at ten. But, but since they were on the road, they were seven. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and that's just like looking at um the head to head kind of, or that's that's over under yeah. or no, that's just a head to head. So the over under is the total between both exactly. teams. Exactly. Okay. So Bears Saints. And what uh, do you usually like to do with NFL games like over under? Is this... Well, I mean, there's a lot of things that factor in it. Like if the yeah. team's got a, a crappy defense, what kind of offense they're throwing. Um, yeah. you know, a lot of it is how many possessions you're gonna get. So it, it all depends on you know two teams. You could have a great defense and a great offense, but the NFL is an offensive league now. I mean, we all right. know that. I mean, even you talk about college football. Nick Saban even said that he's had some great defenses at Alabama. It's 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 an offensive sport. Football is an offensive yeah. sport. Yeah, you want you know? a few points scored. 
You point, scored. point scored. So do you guys I mean, uh, usually defense. like to bet the overs on a lot of these games? Well, or? I mean, it honestly, really yeah. Right now. Yeah, yeah, it, it depends on the coming. matchup <laughs> of the team. <laughs> He's just embracing um, it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, gambling's obviously become more widespread since it became legal uh, in, yeah. in Illinois. Has now got it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many things you could bet out there. Futures. <laughs> Um, you know, you could even like I think if you put a hundred on the Bears right now to win the Super Bowl next you'll year, get, or something? no, this year, oh, this year, you'll get nine thousand. Yeah. So they're they're, they're ninety to one. Yeah, yep. <laughs> holy yeah, they are. Yep. They're the I like betting shot. those high odd things just yeah. because. I'll like, take that bet again. Do if you it. Want I mean, bet on the Bears. I mean, you put ten <laughs> bucks down on the Bears and yeah. win. I mean, win. obviously they're not, but some people <laughs> will find a diamond in the rough. I mean, I don't think the Bears are the one, but I mean, even in other sports. You know, they'll be like, they'll put, and what you could do now is it's like, say if you have like a, a future wager, you could actually sell your ticket to somebody. Somebody will buy gotcha. your ticket. They were just talking about and on the radio. could go up in value potentially. Like. Yeah, they were just talking about on the radio, this guy put like a couple hundred dollars down on the Lakers to win the NBA championship. Um, and then it was, the I think, the Dodgers to win the MLB. Yeah. And then he had Clemson, and it was like 400 to win like 45 grand. Wow. And he, and he had Clemson to win the national championship. Yeah, no, he, he sold that ticket for nine grand. Oh, oh yeah. Just last a couple weeks ago, and they lost. And Clemson lost, oh. yeah. So he literally, <laughs> yeah. so whoever bought, and now these people got big money, the people who are buying these tickets, and sometimes these guys split it. And, hey, you got Trevor like Lawrence that. sitting there. Yeah. Ah, it's probably not a terrible yeah. thing to yeah, go. It's not, yeah. not the only bad, thing I got to hit here now is. Yeah. This? And like, you could like yeah. so on on some of these uh, websites now. You got DraftKings and uh, FanDuel. Bet Rivers, FanDuel. Yeah. If you're winning in, in, a, in a parlay or in a game, you could cash out. So if By you way. let's oh, say really? you do a parlay and and you you make a hundred dollar bet and you could win a thousand. Well, if three or four of your games clear and you still got a game out there, you could say, "All right, I want to cash out and just forget and about whatever the fourth it would have been as a right. and they'll, game they'll like they'll or offer you it's like deal or no deal kind yeah, of or right. whatever. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. I didn't but, know that you could do that. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. That's I mean, people I end know. up regretting it because they could win big money, but this guy in the yeah. Clemson situation, yeah, um, he ended up making a good deal. You know, nine thousand. <laughs> yeah. I saw a guy bet. something he wasn't going to win. Anyway. I saw a guy yeah. on FanDuel yeah. bet ten dollars on like one of the early <laughs> Kansas City games that. The first touchdown would be Patrick Mahomes on a on a run. Run, yeah. He <laughs> bet ten bucks and he won like nine grand. Yeah. yeah. But his buddy had the same bet and cashed out right yeah. before right. the game because it was like Kansas yeah. City had received the ball first, so right. the odds went up. So his money went up off his ten dollar bet. I think it was like at thirty bucks. Yeah. And yeah. they're driving, it's going up, and he cashed out. Patrick Mahomes fakes the handoff, runs right in. His buddy wins yeah. like nine grand on a ten dollar yeah. bet. It was yeah. What are the so one of the things too is, is the long time ago when the Bears were in the Super Bowl, Devin Hester was one hundred and fifty to one to return the opening it, kickoff. Yeah, and he obviously Tell did me you it. Didn't, you better. I didn't have it, but I I know people that I don't know anybody personally, but yeah. I know there was people that oh, made yeah. that. Oh yeah, I bet. mean he was the guy you're talking about, and like that same year, Ted Ginn had. Uh, returned the opening kickoff to the uh, the NCAA championship, the you know college football championship right. for Ohio State. Right. Same year, yep. first kickoff returned it, and guess who lost that game? Ohio State yep. lost. So when Devin Hester opened the first one, I was like cautiously optimistic, but I'm like, <laughs> is this like a weird foreshadowing <laughs> yeah. thing that we're fucking with? Well, here? like the Super Bowl, you know, you used to be able to bet every, and you still can. You bet everything, but but now it's the every game. The, uh, well, yeah, like you could do f- coin flip this, and now it's, it's, they every do game. this for every game. Props, well, the prop bets are crazy. Are, are yeah. Crazy. There's yeah. so many of them, and, and some fun. people re- they're fun. Yeah, it makes it fun. I they're mean, fun. For Super Bowl people, can, I know people that don't watch football all year, and they'll bet every year on like a coin how, flip or color the Gatorade. The national anthem is right. Something like that. Yeah, and it's yeah. no. <laughs> and there's those get they got everything. They got everything out there for you nowadays. Yeah. Um, what's your uh, What's your take on all this? And Brandon, actually, you go to you because I know you do a little bit of the the, the uh, fan daily? duel and some of the daily. I've been, yeah. been doing some of the fan duel. What do you think about um, how it affects? It's going to start to be where you're sitting in, let's just say, a baseball stadium, okay? And you're going to be able to bet like live while you're sitting in the seat, like pitcher a fucking ball or a striker a ball or like a base hit or an out like right. you're gonna be able to sit there this live game betting do you think that takes away from the view experience of being in the stadium or do you think that that's gonna actually enhance the I experience think it varies from sport to sport for baseball i think it enhances it because it's kind of a slow game because it's a slow game you got time right. in between you, you got time in between you, you're okay. thinking the pace mm-hmm. of the game is going to enhance it but what do you think about like the nba nba i think it's almost impossible yeah. like it's NBA hockey, yeah. you you can't do it. But yeah. for base, for me, for they're baseball, gonna try. They're gonna, they're gonna try. try. They're gonna try. But yeah. for ba- for baseball, it makes it more interesting for me. Yeah. 
Uh, I think even football in that sense, because there are breaks in between. And the, I mean, there's well, breaks like in between. Like for baseball, quarters. if you could even get like a couple hundred more fans in the stands oh, that, they are, need it. that are buying food yeah. and right. beers and Hell whatever, yeah. and if they're just there just to gamble, dude, the owners don't care. Like right. they yeah. want they're, it's they're, money for them. You know? got the You're paying tickets. for parking exactly. and this and that. The you know? smartest thing I think they did yeah. too with all that was, when, and I, I know it was actually partially because of an incident that happened with the Cubbies. Um, one of the batters, I think it was uh, Amora, had hit a yeah. little girl on a foul ball, but they started yep. extending the screens out, yep. which actually really benefits this this daily gambling and this like instant gambling because People, if you're sitting down at your phone mm-hmm. in a baseball game, you're sitting third baseline down yep. the line a little bit, and you're down at your phone, and they're eliciting that, and they're saying yeah. – Gamble live. Let's do this, and now you got your head down. Right. Yeah. That's not well, an ideal let's, thing well, for a lawsuit. Let's face it. Everybody's yeah. on their phones. At, I mean, yeah, in a baseball game, you whether it's put that. you're at Twitter or yeah. Facebook or <laughs> yeah. whatever, you yeah. might not even be gambling. You know, you, you could you're be swiping on, on Tinder Fantasy, or something. Right. You, you know, know what I mean? Fantasy sports. So, yeah, you're always on it. Yeah. Probably a smart thing for them to extend those. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a good <laughs> idea. At first, I was like a little bit like, oh, this kind of sucks, but a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and it's harder to catch a fall ball, but yeah, for sure. No, they did a good job with that. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Well, let's get back to football here. So, uh, as far as the other games here, though, I know we've kind of made our picks, but what are some of like the most interesting storylines? Like, what are what game are you looking forward to the most, actually, Lubin? And I can read them back off to you if you don't. No, I answer, but. Uh, Washington, baby. Yeah, Alex Smith story, I Ron love the Rivera story, sm- story, upset of knocking out Brady. Yeah. and I'm not really a Brady hater. Just for some reason this year, I just. He's, he's, had had I, he's had enough. He's had enough. He's had enough. That's exactly what it is. I want yeah. to see well, that losing team that gets into the playoffs yeah. win a playoff. It's, and it, and that, I, I, it would be the best storyline. It's a good storyline. Yeah. The whole season. The Bills. Without Smith getting like a playoff win. The Bills game is probably be the most exciting for me. Yeah. But I'm no, rooting it, for it Washington. Bills Colts, right? Yeah. Bills yeah. Colts. The, the, yeah, the Bills are just. Buffalo and they are allowing like 10,000 yeah. fans. Yeah. They don't care in Buffalo. No. That mafia. And the Governor Cuomo is going to be there too. Bills Mafia. Yeah. Governor Cuomo said he's going to show up. Out in the, uh, you know, yeah. be jumping off of cars on the tables and shit. Yeah. I'm sure the Bills might I like be that Washington. Extra. I like the Washington Bucks game because it's it's a storyline on both sides. You you want to see Alex Smith do it. You want to see Ron Rivera take yeah. a garbage team and get to, sneak into the playoffs. Sneak, in, sneak into the playoffs and get to the next round. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but you also want to see the Tom, goat be goat. Tom Brady yeah. hater or lover? You want to see what Tom Brady is without one of the greatest coaches ever? Yeah. Is he? Tom is Tom Brady yeah. the greatest Brady. one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time or was it the coaching and right now making the playoffs in the way that the right. Patriots their season was granted they didn't have a lot of talent Tom Brady's looking like he's been the real deal yeah. right. the whole time, the I agree. Whole time. Yeah. so yeah. it's a good storyline either way and you it's know, and it's six rings or seven rings it's for him. six, it's six. so six he would have seven which would make him and one more than Belichick no, no, no. One more than Mon- not Montana, right? No, Montana's no, like no, a no, four. No. Montana's four. He's Who? the most in, in, in He has the most yeah, rings. In football, in football yeah. there is. Yeah. Okay. He's basically competing with, like, the Jordans yeah, and, Jordan. like, the fucking... Uh, Bill Russell. Bill Russell's of the world <laughs> at this point. So, Art fucking... Uh, what's his name? The, uh, Gretzky? No, uh, the the coach for the Celtics, Art... Art oh. Blanchard or something no, like that. Oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but... God damn, damn. Yeah. Anyways, I don't even know if it's Art. Go, it's, going uh, back to Tom Brady, I mean, obviously... One of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Uh, I mean, he's got a shot to go deep in the playoffs this year. But if you had to start a franchise around one quarterback, would you choose Tom Brady or Peyton Manning? Right today? now. Today? Just, well, no, no, in no their not prime. today. I'm in just the, saying. In their prime? In, in general. <laughs> That's a good one. In a playoff game? And I know six no, no, championships. Start a champion. Start yeah. a, a playoff run? Or is that on this Super Bowl? I'm just saying, just you're starting a franchise around one guy. Is it going to be Tom Brady or Peyton Manning? In their prime? I'm just you yeah say, wh- whoever we we pretty much have the finished I'm gonna product say, of both yeah. of them. I'm gonna say Tom Brady because he's done it with less talent. Yeah. Uh, Peyton Manning's numbers he had Marvin Harrison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He had some. He had uh, I forgot the other receiver's name. Reggie Wayne. He had Reggie Wayne. Yeah. yeah. I mean he had some great. Reggie ta- Wayne's uh up for the Hall of Fame this year. He should, yeah, he should get in there. Yeah. Tom Brady did Marvin it with Harrison, Wes Reggie Welker, Lee. Julian Edelman. The best receiver Tom Brady ever had was like Moss, one like year of Randy Moss, Moss at the end of his career, who yeah. had like double digit touchdowns. He's well, he got a few good ones this year. He broke the record. He had a few good ones this year. He had Gronk. Sure. He had the killer, uh, Aaron Hernandez, <laughs> for a little yeah. bit. But yeah. 
talent best tight end duo of all time. Though. <laughs> yeah. See, and I, yes, I, and, and I, yeah. I don't think there's any right or wrong answer here, but yeah. I would probably take Peyton Manning. Really? Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, I six championships, saw- but th- that whole marriage just worked. You know what I mean? Uh, it was like. I mean, don't get me wrong. We I saw it since I, we were in high school. Yeah, and right I feel on. Like we've we been seeing it for Peyton twenty Manning years. Tom Brady to say like he didn't get it done always. He, he just didn't get big, it done for me. Uh, these regular season stats, but like he only won one Super Bowl. And, but like, he got knocked no, he out by two. Tom Brady. He's getting no, he, he won two. two. Denver. Denver. He got the he one in Denver. 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 Sorry, he, and that defense. Still, that defense won that championship. Give him that one. He still won it. I'll still give it to him. His arm looked like a fucking noodle, like a cooked noodle at the end of his career, but. I will still give it to him. You still won a fucking Super Bowl. I'll give it to you. But it, it, this is not day, me saying that Tom Brady's not the GOAT. And right. I just said if you yeah. could start one franchise with one guy, Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, I would choose choose Tom. I would choose Peyton Manning. I think just, Tom only because the work ethic. And, sixth round, Tom? And 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 first <laughs> overall and, or and, was it second overall pick? Uh, Peyton Manning? Peyton Manning was it? Yeah, oh, was yeah. it Ryan Leaf number Ryan one? Leaf was the Ryan first. Was, I think Ryan Leaf was the first. Wow, what a pick that was. So hand. We'll take a little break here. We got Chef Jordan bringing us in some lamb chops. Let's go. Let's see what we got here. I'm very excited about this. This is our first grilling segment. I've been wanting to do this for a little while as well. I'm glad that you invited me for the grilling segment. Oh, hell yeah. Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to take one of these, get a little sauce. Wait, wait. What do you got? What do you got? Oh, give me a little Oh, 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 nice. All right. (sighs) Yeah, yeah. All right. Brandon, you you got it? Yeah. You got a little sauce on yours? Yes, sir. Why, thank you. Thank you. God, this looks amazing. Oh, my God. Whoa. Oh, man. He cooked them real well there. Oh, that man. Was so- not well in the sense of temperature. But, uh, that's all. Wow. Oh, my God. That sauce. Dude. I need I need the recipe for success, that sauce, man. My Good. compliments to the chef. Yes. Thank you. That was a success. <laughs> yeah, man. Wow. Uh, can I take one more before you leave, actually? Yeah. Thank you, sir. He'll be in the I'm gonna uh, go casting through. room. Okay. Oh, yeah, Holy you shit, taste that's right good. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, mm. I need yeah. another one. I think you ate that potato. Yeah, yeah. You got a potato or not? I, I ain't got a potato, but I need another one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Whoa. Bones in a fire. Whoa. Hold on. Be Mike careful. <laughs> wow, these are good. Yeah. 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 Double dipping. Thank you, sir. Another? I'll do one more, of course. <clears throat> wow. Man. This was Make fantastic. Sure we... Get some for them. I was going to say, give them a little bit, little taste over there. I almost feel bad now. I forgot about these guys. I kind of do, but this is so good. I know. Yeah, we're uh, you know we're the talent. Now fuck these guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was excellent. That is really good. Yeah. Mm, All right, mm, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do a food episode one time. We keep going. Well, I'm like, eating. So our our thing that we want to do here with the grilling segment is Jordan, who's the first one that came to mind. You know, I got him the, the apron for Christmas here. I'll give a shout out to Personalization Mall in Burr Ridge. All my Christmas shopping the last couple of years from this website got it to me in 10 days, like 30 personalized pieces. I oh, highly wow. recommend PersonalizationMall.com. Nice. Give them a little plug. Um, but Jordan's been like showing our family the last couple of years when we go up to the cabin. He's got some cooking skills. So I wanted to do this thing where like, yeah, we're getting some bands on. We're getting some comedians on a couple of weeks. We want to do like a grilling yeah. segment, kind of you know show off a couple of different talents that people got. Uh, and my little brother, I didn't realize he was he was banging cook. If anybody thinks they can outcook Jordan, <laughs> come on on. Yeah, yeah. make sure I'm here. So, so you, you lead right into what I was gonna say though is we're gonna give him a bunch of shots here. He's gonna get three or four uncontested grilling segments. But we are, as a bonfire banter show here, we are investing in a championship bonfire barbecue belt. Mm. And what's going to happen is Jordan's going to get a couple times to feed us for free and show us that he's legitimate barbecuer. But at some point, we're going to bring in challengers. Okay. And we're going to do a blind taste test. And whoever wins that blind taste test is going to get that belt. May I get the panel for the yeah, taste Yeah, I want to be on the panel yeah. for that. We'll bring we might have back. to get like six chairs for yeah, that. Yeah, no, we will, we will make sure I that got that wine palette, trust me. <laughs> you guys came out on a night that we're sitting here in uh, about 20 degree weather, uh, and if you guys want to be back on when we do that competition, I will make sure. I still taste that sauce. It's Yo, That sauce really is so good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. I might even go get some of those potatoes and put some of that sauce yeah. on it a little bit here. If you guys oh, have never had, stuff. if excellent. you guys have ever had the really sausage or the burgers from Mariano's, I don't know if you guys ever shopped there. I, you I, gotta make yeah. it make the trip. Oh. I'm good actually. Thank you though. Not nothing. Everything went in. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> really freaking good. Yeah. 
So, um, shout out to Mariano's. Fantastic establishment as well. Okay, so let's get back to football, though. Um, I think we left off with talking about a little bit of gambling. Yeah. And you were kind of jumping into some of the daily stuff. What's, like, been your hot thing on gambling this year? Like, what are your kind of trends you kind of lean to? I've been betting. You know what? I kind of did it this way. I had three fantasy leagues this year. Okay. I took that borderlines on too much. That's like the break yeah, for me. Yeah, because you start yeah. to root against yourself. Yeah, uh-huh. sucks. Uh, yeah. Most I've ever done was four, but I took the players from my fantasy teams, and then I would go into like the, the fan duel, and I would bet on touchdowns. So oh, I, start, touchdowns. I started the season betting. I had Jimmy Graham. I was betting per game like five bucks that Jimmy Graham would score a touchdown. First four, I think he gave me the first four, the, my $5 bet usually net me between 18 and 21 bucks. Okay. And then I had Alvin Kamara in one league and I had Derrick Henry in another. Cool. And I saw early on, if you bet before Sunday, I was betting 10 bucks that those players would score multiple touchdowns. Yeah. That $10 bet was paying out 45, 50 bucks a pop. Well, Derrick Henry, after, after the first four weeks, after he did it three, four weeks, that the, the, the line yeah. came down, yeah, yeah, yeah. but right. still the first four or five weeks, you know, FanDuel gave me 50 bucks. I was, I was up 900 bucks in my FanDuel account. Right. Now I lost some of it. Of course. I cashed out a little bit yeah. and I got, <laughs> but starting at 50 bucks, it wasn't bad, but yeah, I took the approach of betting on players that I kind of needed to win in my right. fantasy. So you kind of doubled down on your fantasy I doubled team. Doubled down on my yes. fantasy team. Yeah. yeah. That's well, not, you not a bad good about your draft. And it said the guys yeah. that I got, I like. Yep. So right. kind of like I like rooting for the guys that a lot of times you get caught up in fantasy. I got one league that I run that's a little bit bigger money, so I try to go with my brain. <laughs> and my other league this year, I kind of go with my heart, like Throw guys that water. I was rooting to mm-hmm. do well. Right, right. Um, and I did better in my league. That I was rooting for uh, with my head. Uh, <laughs> at the end of the year, it actually kind of turned the opposite way a little bit. But um, he almost caught you in one league. Yeah, yeah, almost you caught did, you. He did good. He started yeah. out bad in my league, oh, yeah, and he camp- ended up catching up a little bit. But um, and then Lubin, as far as you know, you'd already said that this Washington game is your favorite here coming up. Yes, but sir. If you had to bet on a team, if you had to like one of the teams coming up, and I can read off the matchups to you again. But if you had to bet on one team to say like this is my lock, Lubin's lock, Lubin's lock. Steelers, baby. Steelers, Steelers or the Browns. Okay. Oh, yeah. It was just fun because I like that that's your answer because that was the one that split down the middle on this panel yep. tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I kind of like that. I mean, obviously, I'd take the Saints, but I will never bet against the Bears. Yeah, that is the However, easiest lock, maybe, I think other than the Bucks. Which one are you drinking? No offense. I'll tell you in a second. People are loving the Browns story, but got to go with the wallet and I got to go with the Steelers, even though they've been you. probably shitty for the past five games. You can't run the wall. I so just, I'm actually one that's going to say I love the Browns mm. uh, plus the six points. Yeah. Uh, and I, not and that only – That kind of comes into play a little bit. I think Lubin maybe is talking straight up here yeah. without <laughs> points being involved. Yeah. But, yeah. Right, plus yeah. the no six points, points I, I will definitely take the Browns. They've seen each other. This will be the third time they've seen yeah. each other. Yeah, divisional so that, that, opponents. That throws in – you know, I think the game will be close. Yeah. And a lot of times when, if you bet an underdog – um, there's something called the money line. I don't know. You probably know, Brandon. Mm-hmm. But uh, so the money line is is basically a game to uh, to, to who's going to win straight up. Okay. So, like Browns are six point underdog. Right. They're probably plus two hundred on the money line. So you if you is. bet a hundred, you win two hundred. You get three hundred back. Okay. So that that's like, how that works. I, so I've like the been, highest. Yeah. So the higher the odds are, like minus ten, eleven. Right. That's the higher the money line Ooh, will go. We. So what game were you just talking about? No, Steelers. we were just talking about Browns. Steelers. Okay, Browns. Steelers, Browns. So I got it. You want to hear Caesars, Ooh. the consensus, or DraftKings numbers? E- either one. It doesn't matter. They're all probably okay. Let's go Caesars. Close. We got um, Pittsburgh at negative two sixty, and okay. then Cleveland at plus two twenty. So you were right there. Okay, yeah. so yeah, I was pretty right, close you're, you're there. Right there. So twenty dollars. I was twenty bucks off. So, so. If you wanted to bet the Steelers' money line, that's just straight up. Forget the spread. They win okay. by a point. Yes. So you you'd win. have to lay $260 to win 100 Gotcha. So that so it's a lot of money, but yeah. they should win, you feel right? You pretty safe. Yeah. Yeah. Like winning 100 bucks. So, yeah. like, if uh, I'll give you a perfect example. for I like Cleveland plus the points. My buddy always taught me if you like a team – that's an underdog. You bet them plus the points and take a little taste on the money line. Okay. So, for instance, okay. if I was going to bet a hundred on Cleveland this weekend, just plus the six, okay. and let's say they they not like only 20 cover on the money line, yeah, twenty twenty five on the money line. Okay. So, so you win the hundred there, and then, and then if the money line plus uh, is twenty five, you get 
sixty bucks. So you're yeah. now you're instead of just winning the hundred, you're winning one hundred and sixty. Hell yeah! Okay. And if they that makes let's say if they cover, if they cover but they don't win the game. You're still winning forty. You know what I mean. Okay, so no. throw a little taster on the because you, you're going to lose the, yeah, yeah, or you're, you're actually going to win more. Is that a you're teaser? Gonna, is that what that's called? It's not. It's no. It's not a teaser. A teaser is okay. like when you take multiple teams and you you get points in your favor. Okay. So if you take three teams, like like let's say you like the Saints, Steelers, or you like the Saints, Steelers, and whatever, you could tease it down to like Saints minus three. When they're normally minus ten, okay, you get seven yeah. points in your favor. Now it seems easy, but a lot of the times, like if you bet a hundred, you're only going to win. You're going to double. You maybe you win two hundred okay. on a teaser. Yeah. It's not like a straight parlay. Like if you bet straight parlays against the spread, uh, a two team parlay pays two hundred sixty. So you bet a hundred, you win two sixty. Okay, so if you okay. took like let's say the Saints minus ten and Cleveland plus six, and they both cover, you get two sixty. Okay. So it's you get a little bit better odds, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. Sense. But you got to win them both. If you lose one of them, you're, you're done. Parlay. You lose. Yeah. Parlay and a you teaser. A, okay, and a teaser. And a yeah, teaser. Yeah. Interesting. I never even heard of a teaser before. You just brought yeah. it up. Um, so one thing I want to talk about really fast. Take a little slight break here. To the trees. More brewing Not companies. Bad. Pretty good. Uh, IPA. What do you guys think about this, Brandon? You had tasted it first. What do you think? You like it? Is uh, do you typically drink IPAs? <laughs> That's damn good. <laughs> That's damn good. Yeah, it's, it's good. I do. Okay. That one's damn good, though. This is good. This yeah, is, I do like that. It's not too hoppy. Where are they located? They're on Villa in Villa Park. Okay. And they're also on the Auto Mall Drive in Huntley. That's actually their big location. That's okay. their original. Um, but, yeah, fantastic stuff they're doing over at Marlboro Company. Yeah, yeah that's uh, really what good. What do you think? You, do you drink a lot of IPAs at all? I'm not or? a big IPA guy. I'm a very basic drinker. I drink yeah. Coors Lights, yeah. and if I want to get a little crazy, Jack and Cokes or yeah. Vodkas or something <laughs> like that. But <laughs> this crazy. isn't bad. I mean, dude, yeah. you put anything on my hand, I'm going to drink it. Right. Come on. And, you know, I know you know a ton about beer and stuff like mm. this. Uh, you know, you've I know you've tasted a ton of IPAs. Where would yes. you put this as far as uh, how do you how do you rank this thing? Or what do you uh, think I think it? it's excellent. You know, it's piney up front. Piney. You know, yeah, I, can see uh, that I think that's where and they I get think, the. I think it actually industries. said that in there that it's yeah. Got so some of that. you taste yep. that right away. Yeah, and then it's a little softens. Citrusy. Yeah, very citrusy. Yeah. Then it softens on at the end, and you still taste that aftertaste, and that's what you want. You don't want something that's going to burn your nostrils. Yeah, those are called IBUs. International bitter units, so how bitter the okay. IPAs are going to be. Yeah, this stuff, excellent crafted. I think it's like m- like medium as far as hops go. Like it's I w- yeah, I would say it's yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's super hoppy, and that's kind of a good thing because people just started coming out with just burning wow. it out oh, bombs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you're just like, dude, oh my it's god, like drinking an oil can. Yeah, or exactly. something. It's like, come on. One of the things that uh, Pulowski brought out here, Brian Pulowski came out for our, our uh, craft brewing thing. And the the sour beers. Oh yeah, I can't do it. No, yeah. no I've never. Had he's a big sour into beer. them. Dude, I've known Brian sour. forever. Like he's big into all that. Like really? Sucking out <laughs> a warhead. Dude. All right, if you guys get, let, let's do like a bar stool type. Get one through ten. You guys could use decimals. What did you? What do you think? Rate okay, the beer. Okay, yeah, let's do that. I like that. It's, it's brilliant. It's about an, eight. about an eight. Okay, eight. Yeah, I really enjoy it. It's good. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it. A, I'm gonna give it an eight point seven. Okay, eight point right? seven. That's it, pretty it's good. Pretty, it's pretty high for me. I I'm an IPA guy, but. If it's too hoppy, I'm not super into it. Okay. Every once in a while, I'll drink Antihero. It's about as, as hoppy as I want to ever get. This is kind of medium, and I also like Belgian Wheats, which is going to give you your more citrus, um, like a, a Blue Moon or more so like an Oberon by Bells. Uh, I think this kind of hits on a couple different marks as far as being uh, got a nice little hop to it and then also getting some citrus in there. Um, and do you want to try a little bit of this? Uh, We're brothers, keto. so it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, you got the keto going? Yeah. Oh, I doubt Can't it. The carbs. <laughs> oh, you really are going keto? Yeah. Oh, we got this little weight loss competition we're doing, and I guess Jordan's you taking it seriously now. Yeah. Yeah. So, Money involved? Right. Yeah, $420 oh, in three months. Yeah, keto it is, then, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs> keto it is. I guess I'm going to start running. <laughs> yeah. the, the 420 might just buy you the keto food for the next three months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is expensive. It is expensive. Friday's a so cheat you, day for you about me. to leave? Yeah, I'm signing off. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chef. Chef. Hope everything is good. I'll be back next week. Yeah, Alrighty, hell yeah. Good. Hopefully we'll get you back out next week and start thinking about what you're going to cook us, man. Now you yeah. got to beat that, that somehow. That's a dish that I've done very few times. Imagine something I've done 
lot of times. So he was saying that was a dish he's done very few times. Imagine something he's done a lot of times. So I want to be here for that. Butter next time. Yeah, I want to be here for that Swirl one. Swirl marinated in Cambodian right. breast milk. That's his go-to. Yeah, that's his bread and butter. <laughs> Okay. I'll go. With, I'll go with a seven point two. I'm not a big two? IPA guy, but I, think, I feel like that's a pretty generous I one. Think for it, not it's being really an IPA good. Guy, yeah, I think for not being an IPA guy, I think that's yeah. a pretty good rate. Okay. Yeah, I go with uh, since it's very balanced, which is hard to do. I go eight point three. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. So, yeah, we're, we got we're some up there. High grades for this one, for yeah. sure. The one we're going to do in a little bit here, I'm going to let you guys settle on this and might even come in on the third segment. Um, I thought this one paired better with what we were eating, which I don't know if either of them were perfect for what we were doing tonight. Um, but we're doing a milk stout in a little while um, by them called Hush of Night. Uh, which sounded good too, and and Ross over there at More Brewing Company just basically said, "Hey, go take a look at our, our menu uh, mm-hmm. online and whatever crawlers you want." He's like, "Pick two and go for it." I'm like, "Hell yeah!" Right. yeah. So I'm, a, I'm I kind of like the description of this IPA, and the milk stout was one I was like, "And you That's found right. the biggest can there like, was too, no, right?" These are crawler cans, yeah. so these are like, yeah, they, this is what they were willing to give us, and I was I'm like, "Hell yeah!" yeah. So that got us all taster, and we got about half yeah. a can. Yeah, no, this is right. good. Anyone want a little top off on this? Yeah, sure. I, I'll take a little. I need some. I need some potatoes. Yeah, you want some potatoes? You're gonna have to get that on break. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get that. So um, let's get back into football here. So we were talking about the, you know, the the game that we find most interesting. Okay. Have you answered that one yet? I haven't. You you, you want to do this round, this yeah, round, or this, just in general? Let's say, let's say this round. We're gonna get into some future stuff um, on the next segment. I want to talk about some Super Bowl picks and stuff like that. But as far as this weekend goes, what's the most interesting game for you, and why? I'm gonna say Bears. Uh, the future, the future of the coaching staff and yeah. the GM is potentially on the line. You got Drew Brees. It's more on, than just the game. Really. It's more than just right. a game. On the other end, you got Drew Brees. If Drew Brees loses, he's gonna retire. Even if he wins, I think this I'm is. I'm kind of yeah, for him to win another Super Dude, Bowl. he had I've eleven. Always, I've always wanted him to win one, ribs. another one. I mean, yeah. I've always agreed that I think this not the Drew year though. Brees winning two. Puts him in that top five quarterbacks yeah. of all time. He's already got the touchdowns record. He's already got, so got the, many records. The, the he is a class yards. act too. I know and that he's a class act. There was a you know a couple things in the summer where he you know kind of said some things yeah, and backtracked. He has and, opinions. And, you know, like everybody's got else. opinions, right. and yeah. you know we just got to respect that. And yeah. He he's a class act. I know. Uh, I have, actually have some good friends that live down in New Orleans, and they know the Breeze family a little bit. They do the same fantasy football with their kids, and oh, really? let's see him out at the cool. uh, bar or restaurant, and he's very appropriate. Approachable, and That's you know awesome. you could say hey Drew or whatever, and he, he'll respond. He, he and, was like those guys that like you see yeah. their personality on TV, and you're like he seems like a like cool a, guy, like a, like but then he actually is. is right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what were you you were saying? Obviously, there's some storylines there. Yeah, the Bears. I'm gonna say Bears because I'll be interested interested to see if they win what they do with the coaching staff and the GM. The Bears. The Bears. You're and not gonna Trubisky have to worry about them winning. And, <laughs> <laughs> and but you know if they do. <laughs> you have to give him Sunday, baby. You That's bring right. back Trubisky. You kind of keep the team intact if you win. Um, if you lose, is it, is it a complete gut? Do you feel like you just need a quarterback? Yeah. Right. What is the approach? So, for me, that has so many storylines to it. Um, I yeah. think as a guy in Chicago, too, it's a pretty – I mean, it's, it's in your face yeah, every day. Answer, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I bashed the Bears the first time around. We yeah. were talking about how terrible Mitch was. We said he'd get four. We said, he'd get, we said he would get four <laughs> – and if he Do lost, to bring back up exactly what we said. Yeah, because basically what we said was he's going to have to have two losses in a row to get uh, to get benched. bumped, and then he won Atlanta and he got benched after Atlanta. And, well, and no, he got benched during, during, Atlanta. during Atlanta. During Atlanta, but yeah. they won that game and he was missing passes early on. But they went three and zero with him as a starter, and then they benched and him. Then they benched him, and basically what we were saying in that first episode mm-hmm. was that. You know, Nick's got the arm talent. Nick's the guy. And he didn't Nick, look like it. And then he got it, and it was like, "What happened? Who the hell is <laughs> Nick Foles?" We came in calling him Big Suck. Dick Nick, yeah, and we, were like, oh, we don't know what happened. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I do agree with him in some sense. It's like, okay, how many it's times true. have we seen the Bears in the playoffs in the last twenty years? Four? Is this our fourth time? And Nagy's got two. Nagy's got two. Nagy's well, got two. three years. Yeah, but this was an extra COVID year, yeah. seventh spot. And I'm I not going to take that and away it's a from him. Seven spots never been there before. No, <laughs> the seven spot was agreed upon before, before COVID the season. Hit. Yes. No, yes. Well, or was it? No. Yeah. It, it, well, COVID already hit. 
It was. It was, it was agreed. It was agreed upon before, before the season. Yeah, before but, the but season. COVID was already around. COVID was already. Yeah. Okay. Because of the training camp. Do you camps think that was no, a reason why they did that, or do you think no. they just wanted to add it? Well, there was no training camp. There was no, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> preseason. In your opinion, though, do you think they're going to keep that around next year? I love not this playoff format. It's going to I, I think, think it's great. By, I think it makes the guys at the end of the year that are at the top of the league play more. Right. Because this new format week is great. Right. Rather than two, right? And the NFL loves it. You gotta I mean, think the thing. Gotta, it's one it's extra team. Yeah. You know what more I mean? fan bases involved. More fan bases Hell involved. Yeah. yeah. Uh, more underdogs. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, Absolutely. No, Watch I, it. I, I think it's a great yeah. format. Yeah. What story? I, I think they definitely should keep it. Now you, you know? have fourteen teams out of thirty-two. You're almost half the league, right. which is right. kind of nice. Right. I mean, right. the NBA. And dude, this is NBA does eight. This is professional football. Anybody could beat anybody. That's my point. I mean, you look at Jacksonville. They're terrible. They beat. Indy week one and lost fifteen in Didn't a row. Did the Jets beat the Steelers? <laughs> the not Jets, too long ago? yeah, I mean, like the Jets, a couple weeks ago. The Jets beat uh, Washington, the Jets beat Seattle too. No, was, no, yeah, the, the Jets J- had like two crazy ass wins. Right. At the crazy end of the year. wins in a row. It took them out of number one pick though. Yes, <laughs> which always I will say one thing that I always hate about people. I don't watch a ton of NCAA football, and I've been getting more on it lately. Is it that the turnover is so quick and it's like it's too quick the teams time. change so fast? But I hate when people are like. I watch the NCAA because those guys actually try hard, blah, blah, blah. And then you see a team like the fucking Jets sitting there at 0-13 or whatever the hell right. they were, and they go out there and, and they go win two games in a row. You know what? And people You're going to tell me the NFL get players don't give a shit. They do. And they are trying. They do. They're all athletes. Dude, they're competitors they just like all of us. imagine? Yeah. There's Dude, no way in my life. Just like all of us, yeah. they're competitors. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I would say no way in my life I'd be like, I'm trying to lose. Yeah, I've I'm going to step on your neck and, and keep pushing. Right. These guys, ninety-five percent of them are some of the right. most competitive people right. you ever fucking come across. Dude, right. and I'm gonna make a statement. And I, you and guys, I know you guys have heard it. I hate to lose more than I like to win. And I, I agree know you guys that. are probably the same. I, yeah. way. I agree with that. Justin, I remember watching you play football. I know how you took it. You're a very yeah. competitive person. <laughs> I was the same way. I wasn't yeah. nearly as good of an athlete, yeah. but. I just hate to lose. I love that you've continued your career after uh, our playing days uh, in, in umping and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. yeah definitely. It's so badass. That, like, yeah. it's not going to fucking, you know, and, and to be honest with you, I know that you've been doing it for a long time. Like, I don't know, like, how you get into, like, the upper ranks of this shit or even if that's something you yeah, I've, want to I do. I still but. do it. Uh, my dad got me into it at a young age, and honestly, it was the best because – I was a 13-year-old kid umpire in baseball, so and I was making 30 bucks a game. And oh, this yeah. is – I'm talking 20 years ago. Right. And that's fun and, anyway. And, and, and I'm a I'm a 13, 14-year-old kid yeah. making thir- – and I'm working five days, doing five games a week, Monday through Friday. 150, 150 bucks, bucks a week as a 13-year-old kid. Right. Taught well, me a lot. I, I grew got, up a lot. Well, I got one quick question for you because I think it's funny. At what age did you throw the first fan dad out of a game? Oh, you know, so my dad <laughs> – it's funny you ask that because my dad always – I'll always remember this, and this is 20 years ago. And he's like, Mark, I know you're a 13, 14-year-old kid. And he's just like, you don't need to be on a power trip, but you're – I know that in there's charge. adults. You're in charge of that field. Yes. Yeah. So, Good advice I mean, I, I would say maybe in 20 years of umping, I've thrown seven or eight parents out. Coaches, you parents, remember maybe the first 10. one though? Do you remember the first one? Dude, they all just blend in. Really? I've done, oh, I thought it yeah. I've done like hundreds, a... <laughs> if not thousands, of games. Okay. I can literally tell stories, but um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the thing of it is, is with sports, the kids are great. I've never thrown a kid out yeah. or in, in in any sport, and I've roughed a little basketball here and there and stuff yeah. like that. But um, <laughs> the parents are jerks. The coaches, yeah. for the most <laughs> part, are. Okay, they can yeah. be jerks too. Yeah, but the kids are great. That's and that's what the parents is, keeps you going. Th- that's what kind of kept me going. Is yes. it's like yeah, it's the money and this and that. But you know, I just remember me playing baseball. I used to literally sleep with my glove. Yeah, right. you know, you and, or care whatever. About it, man. I, yeah, it's Cronies like are you heroes? Yeah. You watch it on TV. I, I slept was, with my glove, dude. Yeah. I'm yeah. Peyton guy. Peyton, I'm fucking yeah. my whole life. I've been a Bears fan. Yeah. Like. I got two people at home, two women at home uh, that don't give a shit about no, it, and I'm sitting there by myself watching. Thing. I'm like, freaking out, <laughs> oh, shit! I'm like, you're nuts. I'm like, right. I, get away. See, this this I think just, that's why I've stayed have, single for so long. I need off. someone to be on my crazy level. Yeah, yeah. Just you wait. know, like he with whites. I need a, like a White yeah. Sox fan, like yeah. Bears fan, like a yeah. little bit of Blackhawks or whatever. Just like. Crazy sports fan, yeah. you know. Sammy's big on the Cubs and the Hawks, so so that I can helps dig a it. little I can bit. Dig yeah. It. yeah, we got really big on the Cubs together and went and 
you know, stood outside of Wrigley the night of Game 7 in Cleveland, and we did the whole thing and had yeah. fun with Chef Jordan and his wife as well. Uh, we went out there and stood outside. Did you guys write the, on the wall? Yeah, with I the did. Bo- and my yeah. grandmother, uh, at the time, my great-grandmother was a lived on the north side, was 86 years old when she passed away. It was about four years from her passing. And before, she died in, like, 2012. Um, so I, I wrote her name in chalk on there because she lived her entire life, 86 years right. old, and never, never saw, saw never saw it. it. And I got to see it as a 28 year old, or however yeah. the hell old I was. And um, what a yeah, yeah I, I actually a dated a girl I mean, who was a big Cub fan yeah. at the time. And she's like, "Will you drive down?" And I drove down there with her because, uh, and it's I, history, I do man. not You're like the Cubs. Right. Justin I, knows I do not like the Cubs. Right now, we're talking yeah. NFL, and you got a sex. I know he <laughs> knows I do not like the Cubs, but I do respect my uh, Justin and other people I know who are Cub fans. Uh, you know, and what it meant to them. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, a lot of people that were Cub fans made the phone call in 2005 to me, say congratulations. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. I, I returned yeah. the favor. Who wins one next? Who wins one next? Oh, what's White Sox? Come on, I, I think you even know that. Well, I mean, who wins who's going to win Cubs who or Sox next? next? If you, I mean, yeah, the Cubs Sox. are going to put. The, are we going to go on money yeah. or what? Are we going to yeah. go uh, <laughs> brain or wallet again here? Uh, wallet, I'm giving it to the Sox. Sox yeah. I mean, they're up and coming. You got you got a lot of young talent. Here. I don't I don't <laughs> like the coach hire, but yeah, I don't like it either. They're, Trust me, ninety percent of the Sox yeah, fans don't uh, like it. The the pitching staff, seventy six year old manager, going to manage yeah, that team. That's the dumbest move they've made I mean, in I, yeah. about three four years. Yeah. in my mind. Um, let's get back off of baseball. I want to talk about uh, your biggest the the biggest upset is obviously going to be Washington, and then you're sitting there with uh, the Bears, obviously as well. Mark Cleveland. I mean the Browns. Cleveland. Okay, yeah. I, yeah, I, some I upset keep potential. saying I know we disagree over here, but <laughs> some upset potential. I, and I, like I said, I, if you were to, if the coaches were going to be there this weekend. I would be talking about Cleveland nonstop till yeah. your heads pop off. Yeah. So I'm yeah, not going to talk about them as less, much, but I still yeah. I a little less because you know the factor is it's a different year, COVID, the whole mm-hmm. thing. But I I really do I think Cleveland is going to keep it close. I think Cleveland's going to win the game. Yeah. I do. I think Cleveland's good. Kind I think it's too. just like it's a feel good story and it, that's you know, still a big upset. Baker, too. Ma- yeah. Baker Mayfield. I, I, Not really anymore. I like Baker. Yeah. I, a lot of people don't because he's arrogant, but he backs it up. You know, he's a leader. It was like though. the thing, like with he's Jay Cutler. People said, "Oh, I hate Jay Cutler. He's a jerk." I don't care. I'm not asking him to hold my baby. I'm asking <laughs> him to win. I actually, games. I actually like Jay Cutler more now that I see him be himself. Yeah. I mean, if you, right. if you ever, if you follow, if you have social media, follow Jay Cutler. You guys keep talking. It's hilarious. I mean. On the farm with his chickens, oh, his, yeah. cow, that one's so his chickens, his chickens mini cows. Like he's, trying, or he's trying to. He's yeah. out there camping camera, all night, trying to yeah. figure out with his night vision who's killing his chickens. It's hilarious. I'm I like, mean, where, the guy's the biggest jerk in the world, and he goes from one good-looking girl to the next. It's unbelievable. Yeah, like, yeah, he does. Like Kristen Cavallari, and then he was like dating one of her friends, or the rumor. But and just, every single girl's a ten. If it, he was just his normal self, as a as a leader for our team, right. it would make a big difference. It's like right. that that farm guy, that yeah. old country guy yeah. on his farm. Like, right. He's hilarious. Half yeah, the people love him and half, half the people the, hate yeah, him. Half, half the people hate him. You know you what I mean? And, and you, when you're a quarterback of a team, it needs to be more of the people love you in that in that sense. Right. So I, that was that was kind of like a, a, a tough thing I mean, for him being on yeah, the Yeah, I mean, we get some quarterbacks that just aren't vocal and aren't leaders. Right. Here's here's my take it on happens. Jay Cutler. When he first came to the Bears, he was up and coming, but he never progressed to be that better quarterback. Well, and you want to th- know why? Because he had Mike Mars. five different yeah. oh, coordinators he, or whatever. He, he had, but I think he was years. just satisfied with – He had Mike Martz. Mike yeah, Marsh, Mike, yeah. Mike, Mike Marsh traded away Greg Olson because yeah. he said, my system does not use He's tight ends. Yeah, I remember. And then he took Jay Cutler from offense similar to what – Trubisky's running where he was mobile and cutting the field in half. He took him from that offense and made him do seven step dropbacks because he had a, a strong arm. Right. And you got rid of Greg Olson, who was like a, a security blanket. A security for, blanket. Like, I mean, gave him Brandon. Remember on Sunday Night Football the uh, the year Martz was o- offensive coordinator and Martz called in a play and Jay Cutler literally on national television said, "Tell Martz I said fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> a different play. Was he Mike? Yeah, oh, he was Mike. Uh, you'll find it on YouTube I later or whatever. Yeah, it was great. He's like, "Tell Mike, tell Martz I said fuck you." Oh, <laughs> oh it was great. That I mean, the, 
at the end of the day, I'm a big Bears fan, and you can say what you say about what you want to say about Jay Cutler, or gunslinger, didn't care, he sat there and you know pouted or whatever you want to say about Jay Cutler. Go look at the stat book. Go look, look at the, the Bears. Stats. The Bears have it, don't have some big long list of uh, Cor- Packers right, quarterbacks right, or right. some shit like that. Fucking Packers. This See, is, and you this know is the a, old... a list that is not very. This uh... is another uh, topic that I <laughs> argue with about old school Bears fans. Who would you rather have as your quarterback, Jay Cutler or Jim McMahon? And of course, all the Everybody, old school Bears fans McMahon. as McMahon. Hey, go Jay look at Cutler him. is better. He's a better athlete. He's a better quarterback. Go look at Jim McMahon's right. stats. How yeah. many passing I mean, touchdowns? If it wasn't passing yards, face, the eighty-five Bears. The defense won them that the championship. Yes, I, I mean not to take anything away. I mean I saw a little bit of McMahon. I was young when he played. Um, We've had some terrible coaches, but I mean still. I've had some yeah. heated debates with like my dad, my uncle, and they'll say McMahon, McMahon, well, he's a tough go, guy. Yeah, then go, oh, yeah. But then at some point you got to go. We've had so many terrible coaches, so many right. terrible coordinators. You got to look at management, right? How many guys might have panned out a little bit had we had the right guys? You know, drafting. I mean, you might have got a lot more, to Lubin's point, you might have got a lot more out of a guy like Jay Cutler had we you got, had someone there that could get the best out of him. We oh, we right. hired Tressman instead oh, of getting oh, Bruce Aarons. God, don't talk his oh. name here. Tressman, the day he was hired, I was like, he looked like, like a, a, nerd. a Marvel bad guy to me. He <laughs> yeah. was like the guy that's like in the lab. He like, like a Simpsons like, character. Greasy yeah. hair. Frank like, Grimes. I was just like, Frank the Grimes. Scientist. What is Frank Grimes? <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, Grammy oh Grimes, God. dude. Jeez, Louise. So, yeah, at some point you got to look at ownership, but. No, no. Are you talking about the Bears? I'm talking about it's Bears. It's all on the ownership. All, I mean, all that's all the ownership. thing. It's the McCaskey family. It starts there. You look at any organization in any sports, Cubs, they became what they are now is because of their ownership. Yes. The Bears are where they are at because of their ownership. And, and guess what? They don't put football people. The Bears don't have football people at the top. No. That's the problem. And th- their problem is they know they're filling seats. They know they're filling seats by being the Bears. Right. I right. feel wholeheartedly the the, the that the they're thing. not worried about winning necessarily. Right. Yeah. They want to give you every two, three years right. that big fucking free agent signing. Right. And they go, oh, go buy a bunch of jerseys. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Go buy a bunch of jerseys. Come tickets. watch Khalil buy Mack play. Tickets. I actually hope the Bears sell the team in the next few years. Ooh. Like when Virginia ends up passing away. I'm Mark not- Cuban. Please. Yeah, I'll take them. They didn't, I'll take them. they didn't let them buy I the Cubs. I want somebody that cares, somebody that's passionate. That Have you seen – and what I, about know, I hate Epstein to keep going on the, the, the baseball yeah, topic, <laughs> but if you guys see what the owner, who, the guy who just bought the Mets, Cohen, he's literally spent money, he's making trades, he's right. doing – You can tell this guy wants to win. Yeah, I want. you want somebody yeah. – Dude, I'll even take – Yeah, you said Theo Epstein. I'll take somebody that wants to win. I agree. And that's the funny thing is I've heard, like, when he was leaving the Cubs, people were like, oh, how about bring him over to the Bears? Some of this stuff – isn't necessarily like you need to be in the sport to understand it. Right. right. You need to put the right people around you. You need to understand what, like, it's like stocks. It's like right. having a, a guy that is a fucking, you know, a financial advisor or something like right. that. It's like, you don't necessarily, you need to view it as a business. Mm. Right. Your stocks are going up on players and your stocks going down on players. Fucking Just make the right calls. The right players. Right. With yes. the right, with put the right, right people, people around you. Right. Get the right scouts. Get the right. people to do know Like how what the Bulls doing. are doing right now. They're trying. I think that they, well, they're, they're trying. Finally, they're yeah. trying the GM to get there. They just put, well, yeah, they got the, the guy from Denver. Yeah, like from, from, from Denver. Philly. Not from no, Denver. De- no, no, no. From OKC. The... No, I thought he was from Philly. We Maybe might have to check this. The GM? The, the hey, GM's guys, from OKC. Um, over there in the tent, if you guys could check where the new Bulls GM. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the new Bulls GM. Denver. Where did he come from? He's from Denver. Oh, I thought he was from What Bulls, team did he come from? Uh, I know he's from Philly. Denver because he, he mastered the trade that we traded all our, our first, our top t- 10 picks to get Doug McDermott. He oh, gave God. us Doug McDermott, and we gave him two players in return. And, Gotcha. Look what well, we got, Doug. McDermott. You know, thinking about the Bears, and you know, like I said, twenty years they've made the playoffs four times. Yeah, I'm just excited that we get to see the Bears in the playoffs. Yeah, it's I mean, I know they're not going to win. Is, I've already. Hey, you guys know what happened the last time the Bears played the Saints in the playoffs? They won the and they, they the beat the hell out of uh, Red, Reggie Bush and the Drew Brees yep. led Saints. Let's we see. So a good defense. We were at home, and we were the favorite. And we, have, and yeah. we you know, had yeah. a better team. That's when we had Peanut Tillman. But I, had I, I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I remember watching that, that game against Philly with when, when Cody Parkey double-doinked. <sighs> and honestly, like I, 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 I mean, I'm 34 years old. I had, I had tears on my – I wasn't yeah. crying. I had tears. I'm like, I'm never going to see the Bears win a Super Bowl. I mean, I've seen all my teams win, college teams, professional yeah. teams, White Sox, the whole it's thing. It's just too. like, am I – I mean, I've – 
hopefully a little bit more than half my life, I've never seen the Bears win hopefully, a Super Bowl. Hopefully, you motherfucking look yeah. for more, man. You're <laughs> no, like I'm just saying. Way to say positive. 70? Yeah. I, I mean, guess, I'll take I 70. <laughs> But yeah, look for 80, brother. Yeah, <laughs> 80, <laughs> let's, well, whatever. But 80, are the Bears going to win when I'm, I'm, I'm giving them, what is that? Don't Another give 50, us that much. Okay. 56 years? The reason why it's uh, fucking frustrating is that we have a 100-year-old franchise, and the names that come up are Jay Cutler, Jim McMahon, and Dick fucking- Buckus. No, and Sid Luckman. Sid Luckman. Luckman. Sid Luckman. We played right. Those are the, the quarterbacks we're talking yeah. about. And uh, Sid Luckman, you might end up going, that was our best quarterback of <laughs> all time in 1920. Yeah. So right. what are we and really especially, talking about? Especially here? when you missed on well, everybody missed on Patty, but for me, the sure thing coming out of college. Oh, you were right. Really? I, didn't I say Philly? No, you said Philly. No, I said I said yeah. Denver. Said I said Philly. Philly. Yeah. Um, when you when you passed on Deshaun Watson, we that's talked about the, this in the first NFL. That's one. the key. Who, we talked who about this. One in college and beat the Alabama. The knock he on him was sure he was one of the best defenses ever. He beat NFL. Yep. Level defense to win a championship. You can't miss that. His you not, can't miss well, We on talked that. about this right. on the last segment. Yeah. The last time we did this was how many Duke corners are you playing in the NFL? Right. Right. Fucking zero. Yeah. How did many, you guys how even know who Mitch Trubisky was? I did not. And I'll be no, fair. No I'll be did. fair. I didn't know much about Mahomes either, but we all right. knew about Watson. We know I knew about we Watson. We all knew That's about Watson. Right. I will not shit on the front office about For, missing on Mahomes. Right. Yes. That's I'm cool with that. Deshaun right. Watson, but Deshaun was the Watson was, was right, right in your face. Or if yeah. if he's not and Mitch was your guy, you traded up to get him. Yes, See, San Francisco. It's 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 we're being yeah. fair as Bears fans yeah. to criticize yes. right. them for yes. that. You know, it's not like we're all like being money. You should have hit on Mahomes. You need to hit on Mahomes. Nobody's saying that. Right. All right, we're going to take a little break here. Uh, we're going to come back. We're going to try this milk stout, and then we're going to talk some Super, Super Bowl, Bowl picks. picks. All right. So, uh, okay, what were we doing? Well, we take a break, keep going. No, 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 we're going to take a little break. I need to take a little break. We're going to take a little break. All right, <laughs> we'll see you back in just a moment. Bye for banter. We are back. Imagine season. having a 15 year old or a five year old or a five month old, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's like, it's like, like I got a five year old. He's right there. I got to go home. I'm like, I could go home anytime yeah. I want. <laughs> oh, she's, she's, yeah. She's, she's pretty self-sufficient. She's very, man, man it's like having a roommate. Yeah. She's very home. self-sufficient. Right. So, Super Bowl picks up where we're at. So we are rolling, Rob? We're yeah. good? Okay, cool. Well, we're back. We had this last segment for you here. We're trying to get these guys home at some point with, before we get some frost. I found break. a hat. I found yeah, a hat. Yeah, we got Brandon's head is much warmer yes. now. Yes, yes, sir. We wanted to give oh, you yeah. guys a, a, a quick little sponsor shout-out. Um, first off, thank you to all of our sponsors York Furrier on York Road in Elmhurst, like downtown Elmhurst area. Mm. You guys probably yep. all know. Yep. Um, since 1931, they've been a family-owned and operated purveyor of exceptional furs, mm. stylish outerwear, and unique accessories. So check them out at YorkFurrier.com or go in store, like I said, in York Road. Check them out. You won't be disappointed. And then uh, more brewing these. company again. We're going to be trying out this Hush of Night milk stout in just a moment here. Maybe just start the segment off with that. And uh, those guys, they've been in Huntley for a little while. They got quite the banging establishment out in Huntley. Um, and if you guys are looking for unique, one-of-a-kind uh, craft beers and artfully crafted foods, go over to uh, to more brewing company in Huntley or check them out. And then Huntley, like I said, auto mall, auto mall drive in Huntley or, uh, on Villa in Villa park. Uh, so check those guys out. Thank you all guys for your sponsorships and we really appreciate it. We're going to keep doing everything we can to, uh, make it worth your while. So let's try these really quick. Everybody got a little bit. Yep. Yeah, no, you're longer. waiting on yours. I, I'm <laughs> waiting for you guys. I haven't tasted it yet. Okay. All right, Mark, go for it. You guys go okay. for it. So this is the milk stout. I'm feeling like this at the end of the night. We're getting a little cold. Maybe this one mm, will warm mm. us up a little bit. This is, this one's got a little bit more kick to it. Maybe yeah, I'm wrong. Alcoholier. A little alcoholier. A little bit more like... Z- I mean, it's not bad. It's just a little bit more like... Boom. Now, I like when, this. When I picked it out, I was positive that it said the ABV was like 9%. And yeah, now it's seven. written on here, it says 7 So I don't know if that was a mistake or I read it wrong on the website. Is this a little bit more Guinness-ish or, or am I wrong? I, I, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's a more it's kick good. to it. It's, it's got, got more that. carbonation than Guinness. So that yeah. milk stout has lactic in it. So it actually adds a little creamer texture to it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. When, definite chocolate in there. Yeah. You can Very easy going. Notes. But then you do taste the alcohol at the end. So yeah, it's... Yeah. 
This is also well balanced, I think, too. It's pretty, all right, Mark. Damn good. You started this whole thing with the uh, ratings with the decimal points. All right, I'll go seven point one, just because I think it's. I, I like the other one a little better. It, yeah. it, I just because I I got to go a little bit less. Yep. No, so. I totally agree with that. Okay, so. Lubin, what are you thinking? Eight point six. I 8. like 6? it. Eight point six. You rate yeah. it higher than yeah. the IPA. Okay. I think I like it better than the IPA. See, I'm gonna kind of do what Mark did on this first one. Is I don't usually drink stouts or anything like this, but I like chocolate stuff. So as far as stouts go, this is this is a little better uh, than I've tasted as far as stouts go. I like it, but I'm gonna give it a seven point five, okay. and that's just mainly based on my preferences that no. I don't usually like stuff like this. Right. But as far as stouts go. This is one of the better ones. Yeah. Oh, um, it's good. Yeah. I'm a whiskey guy. I like the alcohol kick. It's very yeah. smooth. Okay. Mm. I'm going 8.7. Ooh. Ooh I, I think like it's this. also higher than I the... like this one better. Yeah. I, I like so it. I'm assuming you'll be there tomorrow to get a six pack? <laughs> I, I might. This is, this is good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, I guys, like... these guys sell these stuff in crawlers, which are, I believe, just about three cans. One quart, 32 floor ounces. You're usually getting 12 ounces in a, you know, a, a normal beer, so a little less than three cans. Um... But they have so much more. Okay. This is just the two beers that they got. There was a list of ten different crawlers you could get, but that and that's just their crawler stuff. They also got uh, six or four and six packs of stuff. So go check them out. I mean, honestly, uh, especially if you're not into traditional tasting beers, if you're not like me and and Mark, and you don't just drink like Miller Lights or Coors Lights, and <clears throat> you dig that, if you're looking for something else like fruity or like a ch- taste like chocolate that, milk that tastes- or you're also looking to get drunk yeah. <laughs> you know uh this stuff's right off your head supporting a local business and yeah, supporting a local yes. business. uh we were also talking on off screen about barstool sports and their barstool fund what an amazing situation oh, that is awesome. yeah and we don't ever want to talk good about Aaron Rodgers, but yeah. what just would you? Yeah, tell I, us I just screen? saw a tweet about uh, Aaron Rodgers donated five hundred thousand to the Barstool Fund, and and I'm not an Aaron Rodgers fan at all. Being Nor a are any of Bears us fans, and you know none of us are. But uh, for him to donate, I think they're up to like over nineteen million in like wow. two or three weeks. Damn. Good for them. And for small businesses, I mean that's just it's uh, it's unbelievable. You so, know, I, I love stuff like that. I feel like. You know, celebrities are always all over other countries' crises, and uh, right. I feel like no one's in stepping enough up. at home. I right. feel like they're. Oh, I haven't yeah. heard anything from any celebrities yeah. about like the crisis we're dealing with in right. our own country. Right. And, and a lot of people that are donating are just everyday Joes like us. You yeah. know, absolutely. They're saying, "Hey, donate ten dollars, fifteen, yes. fifty, whatever, hundred, whatever." And you guess can what? Do. You get a million people yeah. to donate five bucks. Right. Yeah. You're sitting on a nice little total there. Yeah. I yeah. mean. At the end of the day, they're doing good things for good people and just yeah. trying to help out uh, American and, citizens and, and, here. And the thing is, you look on everything, you trust your friends, you trust your neighbors more, and, and those are the people yeah. who are really making this happen. You know, it's not the it's big money people thing. and the politicians yeah. or whatever. They're not helping you. It's it's your neighbor and your it's friends your and your family, yeah. you know. Fucking, what do they say? Is like a... Uh, Treat thy neighbor, or how, how does yeah. that line go? Do one, well, that's what I got a kick to, out of it. Yeah. Yeah. They were trying to tell people to rat on their neighbors for having more than five or six people over. Like, dude, I don't care. Like, when I go out of town, my neighbors are the ones that are watching my house yes, or my right. condo, you know, or I watch their their place when they're gone. And if whatever. our neighbors of Bonfire Banter didn't like what we were doing, we would have shut down a long time ago. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I said, we'll not get too far in uh, restrictions and stuff like that and what we've been doing. But let's go to uh, besides all that. I want to get some Super Bowl picks Ooh. here because I've had this is getting out juicy there. here. And actually, before we go Super Bowl picks, I got a juicier one because I want to I want to draw this out because I want these Super Bowl picks to be legit. But I'm gonna start with you, Brandon, and I'm gonna say, what is your Super Bowl? Actually, let's start with you. What do you think your NFC Championship matchup is? <sighs> NFC. That's hard. That's hard. Um, so you got the Seahawks. You got. The Bears, the Tampa. Saints, you got Tampa, you got <coughs> Green Bay's going to be there. Green I hate to say Green Bay will be there. NFC Championship because they got an easy path. They should. They have an easy there. path. They have the offense. And I'll show you the person from the other side of the draft. So basically, the way that I don't like the bracket so much is that they have the one and the two can play each other in the second round, which I right. think is stupid. No, no they, they, they can they never don't, play they that way. The NFL. Nope. Yep. Oh, so. Okay. So yeah, if uh, so basically we got it as on one side of the bracket, it's, it's be LA Seahawks and Seattle. And Green Bay, yeah, yeah, we got LA and Seattle, and then the Bears versus Saints. Now the winner of those two games are going to play each other. And then you got the Bucks versus the football team, and they're going to play the Packers. Okay, so and, I just gave you all the teams are going to be playing in the NFC. There, I'm going. 
Packers. It looks like to me, Packers Seahawks. On the bracket, that would make sense. That that could happen. I think that's. I don't think that's a. I think that's a pretty likely yeah. scenario. Mark, do you got anything to say about that? You think I it's think gonna it's going to be. I think it's going to be Packers Saints. Packers Saints. I really Saints. do. Okay. Yeah, that could still I, happen too. They're on pa- opposite sides. Packers, yeah, that Packers Saints, and, and uh, I like I like the Saints to come you out. Like of the Saints the still. Take a look at this. I, I like know. the Saints. Okay. I, I do. I think one of the things you got to consider with uh, with Green Bay is they lost David Bakhtiari and he's their left tackle. Yep. Mm-hmm. Left tackle is the heart and soul of the offensive, offensive line. line. Absolutely. I, line and, side, and, baby. and somebody brought up brought it to my attention that he has missed games in the past, and it, and I said, okay, what teams were they were? And he spit out all. Really crappy teams so the, <laughs> like Houston yeah. and this. I'm yeah. like, okay, there you go. There's my point. Now yeah. you play a team like the Saints, your left tackle, you don't have him. I mean, th- he's a hundred million dollar offensive lineman. We're talking yeah. about. Yeah, fucking real. So I, I'm a little biased because I don't like Green Bay, but I, I still think if I'm going to pick a team to come out of the NFC, it's going to be the Saints. Picking Saints. Okay. okay. So we're we're looking at a two seed there. What you, okay. You I think uh, NFC Championship. I well, I th- I agree with him, and it's going to be the Saints and Packers. Okay. And the Saints are going to roll over the Packers. Gonna roll. Gonna roll. It's in Green Bay. It's, it's going to be cold. They're not going to be in the seat. Dome. It's a little I think it's going to be a just okay. all-out throw fest, and I think I mean, the Saints are going to How come. much better does it get for the NFL if the NFC Championship the game Drew Brees and Rodgers. Or Aaron Rodgers. And I think, Pretty fantastic oh situation they got shaping so up. We're not giving, nobody gives the Bucks a chance. Nobody's no. giving the Bucks a chance, I guess. And, and I'll I tell just, you one thing. I'll give you my fucking point of view here. And just because you said that, and I don't want to bet for the fucking Packers, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go off the beaten path there, and I'm gonna say the Bucks and the and the uh, the Seahawks, and um, and actually, did I pick the Rams in that first one? No, I don't think I did. I think I went the Seahawks. You want Seahawks? I'm gonna go Seahawks. I'm gonna go Seahawks and the Bucks actually, okay. because at the end of the day, you still got Tom Brady. I think that the weapons on the Bucks are better. I think their defenses are comparable. That so defensive the line day, is not bad. Let's see what happens. Uh, so without COVID that? or anything coming else, I, I think that you go in with the Bucks and, and the uh, Seahawks, and I have a tough time betting against yeah, Russell Russ, Wilson yep, at this yep. point in time. So I'm going to take the Seahawks winning that game. But, okay. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't be mad at that. If I was going to pick a wild card besides the one that I said Saints and Packers in the NFC Championship and Saints winning, I would say Seahawks. Just yeah. because they got a great – I mean, Russell Wilson, the guy does everything. Mm-hmm. If you the, give him uh, one possession, he's at the end of the yeah. game. He's got two minutes they're, and they're, they're down defense. by five. Wait, wait, wait. Don't def- bet against Russ. If if they if he does get that and they get to the Super Bowl, do they not throw the ball today. at the <laughs> one. <laughs> they throw a slant or they – You better run, run that ball, ball in. Maybe today they don't because you don't got Marshawn anymore. I don't right? care. You got Chris Carson. You do not throw that ball. Or? I'll never forget that. Yeah. yeah. If he it makes costed it, me money, but it's okay. It's I will subject. never forget Sore that. Sore subject. Mark wants to get past it. I got oh. the over, but I had the Seahawks, so <laughs> I, I had it in a parlay, and the Seahawks didn't cover. All right, Mark, we're going to start with you on AFC here. Okay. You got uh, Brown Seahawks, Colts, Bills. No, not no. Seahawks. No, oh, sorry. Browns, Steelers, Colts, Bills, Ravens, Titans, and then the Chiefs are the one seed. Um, <laughs> so who do you think – what's the AFC championship game look like? Who's playing the Chiefs? <laughs> That's what we're picking, right? I think it's. I don't know. Be, you get the Titans and the Ravens on that side of the bracket. I think it's going to be Chiefs and Bills. Somehow, okay. some way, Chiefs and See? Bills. And I think Chiefs, okay, I, Bill, I, yeah. I'm not going to go chalk again. I'm going to say the Buffalo Bills. I, we've been talking about. We talked about a little off camera, yep. a little bit. I just think Josh Allen. Uh, we talked about this earlier. Uh, for, for MVP 20. 21, 22. Oh, yeah, we didn't want to get this Next pick year, out of here. What do you think? Uh, dude, 50 bucks, 125, whatever. He's going to be the MVP of the Josh league Allen? next year. Josh okay. Allen. That sounds like the way he's dude, progressing. He's a these he things, does. you could probably get 10 to 1, 12 to 1, 8 to 1. I got to see who won He could get hurt. It could go blow up in your face. You to but for 100, right for 100 bucks, I mean, yeah. you win 1,000 or 1,200 bucks. Hey, you got to take a shot on that. I think you're right about You know, that. with Rodgers getting older and Breeze retiring, some of these, you know, t- Brady and all these guys, yeah, it's breed. Josh Allen. Year. Yeah. I think it's I really interesting think. to see this change of guard uh, in the all NFL the old with quarterbacks these quarterbacks are getting out. Yep. I mean, but then you look at the playoffs this year, and you they're have all there. Ben Roethlisberger, all Aaron Rodgers, Philip Rivers, fucking Drew, uh, Drew, Drew Brees, Brees. Yep. Uh, uh, Tom Brady. They're I there. Mean, like they're in the last, they're the last run with right. these old dudes. And at the end of the day, you're looking at guys like Justin Herbert, 
Patty Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson. Uh, I, I mean, and now Russ is the right. old guy in that Russ group. Russ is the old guy. Deshaun Watson, he's a third round pick. You got, what is Russ? He's like twenty six. Russ is that probably 20, no, he's, 28. Yeah, now. he's a little older. He's than older. Yeah. Yeah. He's been in a little bit. Probably now. closer to thirty. Yeah. Okay, so we had gotten your AFC pick. Would you say it was going to be? So yep. So I said Buffalo Bills will beat Kansas City. City so right now, yep. you guys obviously know my Super Bowl is Saints and Bills. We'll come back. Okay, Saints wow. Bills. We got you, Lubu. <sighs> who you think come out of the AFC? Uh, well, I think the I agree with him on the Bills and Chiefs uh, because of just how do you bet against Patrick Mahomes? God, I'm going to pick Patrick Mahomes to be in the Super Bowl. Uh, there is a sleeper that may or may not surprise anyone, but I would really love to see the Tennessee Titans kind of upset a few okay. things before yeah. they get there. They're not going to go okay. all the way, but... If I had I one, I one sleeper, they it, could shock. I mean, they people. knocked if, off Baltimore. They knocked say, off the Patriots. If you're right about it, if you're right about it, they played uh, Baltimore in the first round, mm -hmm. and then they would play the Chiefs. So you're gonna get in that second round. You're gonna get the Titans and the Chiefs. If they win that game, they're in the AFC Championship game. So I don't think it's like it's not far fetched. No, imagination I just say that's like my that fun. Done. That's like my fun pick. Yeah, like, I, I love it. I love yeah. it because I am gonna sit back here and say the same thing. I, I think it's. I like to try to go against you guys. I don't want the panel to all look the same here in this whole thing. But um, I, Bills are kind of my sleeper pick. About halfway through the season, I thought that they had it. Um, and the Chiefs, you got Patty Mahomes, you got Andy Reid. I'm not going to bet against them. They're the, you know, the, they're the incumbent. Um, <laughs> so we're going to go with them. I, I think that's what your AFC Championship game is going to look like. So uh, for me personally, like I said, it's going to be Seahawks, Bucks versus the Chiefs. And the Bills, and I'm going to start with the Super Bowl picks. <laughs> Jim Kelly couldn't get it done, baby girl. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the Bills. You got Bills. They round the wagons. How would Burmese used to say? Yeah, you right. <laughs> round the wagons. The Bills. <laughs> that are going to be the NFL championship. The <laughs> this year, you heard it here first. Oh. The Bills win the Super Bowl. That That's might be wild. something you should open up your wallet for. My okay. my dad's been high on that too. Yep. He wants to take a trip over to Indiana because the casinos are open. The sports book. Okay, you could probably get them at eight ten to one. You throw fifty on them, you win four hundred or five hundred. I might do it for fifty bucks. You know, for fifty bucks, thing. it's, it's, it's a good bet. Right now I, I might yeah. take up on that. I mean, dude, it's hard to repeat in the NFL. You know, I mean, I agree with you. It's the Bills happens. are hungry. You but know, if I'm, anybody could do it, and no disrespect to Kansas City, I'm not trying to disrespect them I'm not saying that it's a popular thing or that I'm feeling. Like I'm a you know gonna go put a thousand dollars on the Bills tomorrow to win this whole thing, but I will put fifty though. Mine is simple. I will tell you that if they're eight to one right, right. now, Even I might I might go do that. Hey, 50. the little take it gives you, keeps you going. Kansas, right. What do you got? Kansas City Green Bay. Kansas City Green Bay is a Super Bowl. Chalk chalk. You can't just as a Bears fan just give it to the Packers. So I know I, you're. You know what? I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I, I don't. I ra I'd rather see Patty win it over Aaron, but I would. I think it would be ironic for them to have drafted a quarterback behind one of your franchise's greatest quarterbacks. I got in, a question for In you. his prime, yeah. you draft a quarterback behind End him. End of his prime. End of, End of his prime. He's, he's going to be MVP. We thought he was done. We thought he was out of his prime. And now, apparently, after this year, it's like. They, the Packers never. I never thought he was out of the, his the prime. Packers, I did. The Packers so, never drafted. So. He's never had a first-round receiver his entire career. Yeah. It's and, wild. And put up those numbers. Yeah. They drafted a quarterback behind him. He didn't like it. He gets your team to the Super Bowl. And he has one of his Packers best are not one of his Packers bet. are not winning the Super Bowl. I've already booked somebody's bet. Somebody said Green Bay's winning the Super Bowl. He I wanna, said 100 bucks. Four, I'll, I'll owe the guy 450 a good I, friend of mine. I want to see so him there. Packer, Packers are not winning I wanna the Super Bowl. See, <laughs> I want to see Patrick. <laughs> I, wanna see, I would like to see Patrick repeat. Yeah. i like to see Andy Reid repeat. But I just think it's ironic that the Packers could get there and they wrote Aaron Rodgers off. And I think if he wins it, he walks. I thought I was just about to if ask. No, right if Aaron Rodgers is walking, no, he, I got this. He I want no retires. way. No, no, not, not, not walks retires. From the Packers. Walks away from the Packers and say, "If I, if, if Aaron Rodgers, the Packers Rogers, might walk ego, away from him. His ego, uh, if his, his ego is so big because they got love. They got their the the backup right. quarterback. I'm now. curious to see about what he's saying. That was my question. If he wins it, if he wins it, he goes to that front office and says, "Trade me." 
because you went in there and drafted a quarterback behind me without and I have drafting another wide receiver. Never receiver. gave me a first round. No, another fucking running back. Never gave me a first round receiver. Never Jones. gave yeah, me. Yeah, a but they did that to Favre too, but dude. That's a here's, here's smart thing. thing. Like that's a, dude. They're you can't think about your organization. But, like but you can't think Aaron, about one player. You got to think Rodgers. about. Your, look, I, I agree with you. Do that to you do that to Alex Smith. You do it to Alex Smith. They did to Brett Favre. The but they kept letting him come back, though. They, they did. The, they tried to do Brett Favre. He retired like fucking three times, and every year you're like, never mind. And they say, okay, Aaron, sit on the bench one more year. Eventually. One more year. And then when he left the Packers, guess who my favorite player in the league was? Was Brett Favre. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. loved him. When he went to the Jets for the one year, I was like rooting for him. He hurt yeah, his bicep. The he hurt his bicep. Yeah, the and then he, got, and then he went to the Vikings, and then I was like his biggest fan. Yeah. And then he like was this fucking close. Ball hair away from beating the Saints <laughs> and throws across the field like an asshole yep. Brett Favre Intercept. is. He and oh, they need the a field goal. They need a yeah. the field goal. Yeah. And he's like on the 30 yard line. And he's an asshole that Brett Favre is. The guy that always beat the Bears. And now that I'm rooting for him, he makes the dumbest yep. decision of his yep. life, yep. which is throwing that fucking pass because he was one pass away from the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, owns it. Patrick earns his money this year, but the guy I'm rooting for next year. Matt Stafford has to get off the Lions. I've always been a Matt Stafford fan. I would take the Bears. And Dude, Matt he is right so. Now. I would take Matt hurts. Stafford right so, now. Would you have the injuries that he's back injuries he's, and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah. Where do you think Matt Ryan Dude. goes? Matt Ryan? Yep, I think he stays in Atlanta. I think no, Matt Ryan. I, no, no way. He is long no gone. Okay, he I makes too much. Contract situation. Then. No, he makes. Yeah. He, is he in his last year? No, he's no, got two more. He has two more years. Yeah, but his contract either be released. His contract is like fifteen percent of their roster. Him yeah, and Julio. Well, yeah, between him and Julio. Well, he was the highest paid player in the league yeah. for a second. Yeah, for a yeah, brief yeah, second. Yeah, between yeah, him yeah. and Julio, they they take up like almost 20, 25 percent. I think he's gonna go to the, the Colts. Colts. You don't want that. That's my opinion. I think I think uh Phillip Rivers We're gonna retire. Yep. And then Matt Ryan moves think, in there. How what a career for really Phillip cool. Rivers though, too, uh, real quick. I mean, he's not I'm uh, probably not gonna ever win a Super Bowl, but God, that guy's what an he's amazing Dan career. Yeah, and one other shout out. One other shout out too. Frank Gore, the guy. Yeah. I mean, dude, oh, Frank my Gore, God. the guy's the third I, best running back ever in the NFL. Wise, only behind. I mean, he's sweetness. first ballot. Yeah. He's, yeah. yeah. he's probably the most. He's probably the most underrated first ballot Hall of Famer you'll ever he's see. Stayed the healthy though. Being is because he's had a lot of mediocre years. He's just played fucking forever. It's LeBron in my mind. Where it's like, oh, yeah, you play fucking forever. No, like, LeBron is awesome. That's different. Yeah, that's, 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 that's different. LeBron's that's different. Winning. But I do like that's Frank different. Gore. Don't say shit. You tear your fucking knee up in the national championship game. And they say you're not going to do shit. You come in, you just don't say a goddamn thing. He never got arrested. He never was a dick. He was never a fucking bad locker room guy. He just sat there and chewed up yards yards. for fucking years. I'd like to see him come back one more year. I don't think he will. For the right situation, he said. Hey, you going to give him a fucking spot on Pittsburgh? Or on uh, a fucking team that needs a thousand yards, shitty team yards. like the Jets. He's a yeah, thousand sure. yards every year. I'm he's, saying like, yeah, not the, you need a guy. It's like it's not the got LeBron like a thing. fucking scat back or something <laughs> like that. Dude, <laughs> it is not the LeBron like the average thing. Year, no, I mean, average <laughs> like career of a running back is like five years. Yeah, this guy's like six, thirty-eight, uh, yeah. two and a half years. Yeah. as a running back in the, in the NFL. This guy's um, thirty-eight. Yeah. No, but that's what I'm saying. It's a testament to his training. Yeah, and testament to what he does on the offseason with his body because. God damn, I played four years of college football and I could barely walk right still to this day. Yeah. This right. guy, what is I he know. putting his body through? And how do you keep waking up every morning? Right. Yeah. But I mean, like, think about it in your head, though 16,000 yards. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. Peyton, That's a yeah. lot. 16,600, I think, it was what Peyton's got. He's, he's right. approaching Peyton. I don't want to play. I don't want to see nobody be Peyton. If he Peyton, plays though. one more year, he's going to be Peyton, which is a goddamn thing. Do you think travesty. he'll do the Barry thing, which is respectable, and say, I don't want I, out of respect. No, he'll never do the buried thing. I'm gonna I think retire so I don't break his record. He's, he's that hard hat pale <laughs> guy. No, he's gonna, get, like, he's gonna, gonna go get it. it. I think he's gonna go get Peyton's numbers. He will touch Because Emmett's numbers. won, right? Emmett's, Emmett's number Emmett's won, won like won. twenty thousand. Yeah. Because he played for the never and This, this that, is our right? argument because he's a Peyton guy. I'm a Barry guy. Yeah. Yeah. Barry's numbers. Barry was great. He just retired way too early. He hated the. Everybody the, hates the Lions. Megatron did it at 32. Why would you? Yeah. Why would you want to keep beating your fucking body? Beat his up body for up. Yeah. He owns a car shop in like Oklahoma. You see Oklahoma a lot of now. players yeah. are retiring earlier. How about the the Lions? Keekly, Matt Keekly, Luke Keekly, Andrew Luck, and never came back. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew Luck was just a he would be the Daryl Rose yeah. of football. 
He was beat. He was beat to hell. Derrick Rose came back at least. God and Derrick Rose, Rose is a freak of nature because he should have never freak. came back, and he's playing the way he's playing yeah, now. He's, like he's, he's should have never he's gotten hurt. Like six man of the year on teams yeah, yeah. are like borderline like talking about like fucking all star shit at the end of last year, yeah. just because I mean he's got a fan base and all star is not necessarily. I wouldn't mind him back the on the best, but me too. Retire a bowl, yeah, sure. Retire all right. Bowl. Have we so, talked about all of our Super Bowl picks? I don't even yes, know. We got, we got our Super Bowl we picks. We didn't yeah. pick Super Bowl winners. Oh, we said yeah. Oh, I, I'm saying Kansas City. I, I did, actually. I, I picked mine. I said the Bills are going to win. I said Kansas so City. Kansas City is going to repeat. Lubin's go to you. Mark will end on you. Lubin, you said you're, you're, you're Kansas Super- City by a field goal against the Saints. Ooh. Ooh. Close game. Okay, I like that. I can dig that. Okay, so, so my, my two teams are the Saints and the Bills. Yes. So... If Tampa gets every man, that's, man, that's, that's a that's a juggernaut. It's really that's tough. Awesome that's a Tampa tough, get, if tough Tampa one to pick. gets there, I'm going to be pissed. My about. heart would say if it was that, I would say I'd want Saints. to see the Saints, Saints just because yeah. Drew Brees yeah. Yeah. go out retire. I think everyone yeah. would. But man, you know what? I'm going to go with Justin and say the Bills. Woo! I'm, 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 I might even throw a little bit of money on it. I, ain't got, ain't I know it's I know it's ain't got enough. I'm going to get away from the chalk Bills. Let's do it. I'm going to tell you one thing. My boy Chris Decker, I played college football with. He's from Florida. For some reason, since I played with him in 2010, um, has been hyping the Bills like they had Josh Allen for the last 10 years. <laughs> for some reason, 10 years ago, this guy thought the Bills were some shit and they were garbage. Uh, Nathan <laughs> Peterman, he thought, was like the second coming. Oh, oh Nathan uh, uh, Peterman was so, terrible. So, <laughs> but luckily, Chris Decker, shout out to you, and I'm going to have to tag you on this because I doubt you, you watch us on a regular basis, Chris Decker. But you've been shouting out the Bills <laughs> for a long time. And Just do. As a Bears fan who has had a lot of pain and suffering, I give you some credit. You didn't have to live through the fucking Jim Kelly days, but you you lived through the rest of those days. <laughs> they were so, trash. Uh, I hope One of the for you guys, biggest that, Bills fans I know, Mike Lanius. I don't. You, oh, you Lanius, know, I do remember Lanius, Lanius is a huge Bills when fan. When he always read uh, like read jerseys. And, yeah, so he's <laughs> crazy. He was awesome, uh, this guy yeah. is a nut Bill fan. He used to when Bruce Rob Smith. Johnson used to be. Their quarterback, he would drink, he would eat Long John donuts in the morning. <laughs> and then Flutie, when he was their quarterback, he'd eat Flutie flakes in the morning. <laughs> oh, he's a crazy Bill fan, yeah, so Bill hopefully for him. Adam Thomas, Bruce Smith, I, I root for any. Mike uh, Lonius was for actually a fan base that's long awaiting something because the Bills, you know what? Those guys are. No, they don't win in Buffalo. So, that's great the thing. quick story. <laughs> I'll tell one little quick story. So, Mike Lon- this guy's a diehard Bills fan. The uh, Music City Miracle yeah. when they played Tennessee, oh, and they I threw know, that yeah. lateral There's pass. A Twenty-one Dixon, year, I think it was a right? twenty-one it was year the, anniversary today. Yeah. of it. Or so like that. yeah, he, they lost. The Bills lost. Uh, they were like, winning the whole game. Frank they ended up losing to, to Kevin Dyson. 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 That, Kevin Dyson. Frank Frank Dyson. Dyson. To Kevin Dyson. Oh, wow. Mike's dad didn't even need to get the call. His dad just showed up. Like literally, the game ended. Two minutes later, his dad came and picked him up, and because it, it was like he was going to go to his room and just be upset and sulk. The whole time, and I felt bad for him. <laughs> I mean, when you're like this big of a fan, you watch. Yeah, some he shit was. Like that. He's a nut Bill <laughs> fan. All right, so Mark, last thing we got to do here. Oh, sign the me. X. Sign, sign the, the X. X. The Sharpie here. We appreciate you guys coming out tonight. It's cold. This got no guard on it, so don't cut yourself. <laughs> um. We really appreciate you coming out tonight, guys. Please Thank sign the handle, not the not the hit. Yeah, that. sign the handle. <laughs> God damn it! Don't be like Brian Connell. Don't, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> Last thing we like to say is shout out to the basement boys. These guys are fantastic. They got a little uh, server Discord or whatever the hell Discord server. I don't know what the hell you call it, but basically a bunch of dudes we used to go to high school with talking about us, liking us. We really appreciate it. Um, basement boys, keep watching. Uh, we'd also like to give a shout out to Jay and Jill Create, MLK Services, which is uh, Mike Kearney's business. Um, I don't know if I'm forgetting anybody. Smeddy last week, I forgot to shout you out. Smeddy brought our guy Eddie, who ended up was a, uh, a sound engineer that made our Quantum episode sound like a million times better than we ever imagined it sounding. Um, so shout out to Smeddy. And for everything you do, thank you for being a part of this so far, buddy. I didn't get to shout you out last week, so I really appreciate it. Um, other than that, you guys got businesses you work for? You want to shout out anything you guys want to shout out? Anybody no. you guys want to talk about? I'm going to keep that under, under wraps. <laughs> 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 All right. All I'd like to say at the end of this is 
We appreciate you guys coming out. Anytime. Yeah, we anytime. couldn't do this without uh, people like you Shout guys. Out to Chef are... Jordan, though. Yeah, well, Chef Jordan, Chef keeping Jordan these was valleys there. full. This was like Chops. literally the quickest three hours of my life. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I want to stay here till midnight. Hell yeah. Well, we can do that. Me, uh, me and you, these guys got to leave. We'll, we'll keep drinking. We'll keep having a good time for a little while. Bonfire banter. We will see you next week for a gun episode. We got a fantastic one coming at you. We'll be talking to you soon. Keep stoking those fires. See you soon. The Bears. The Bears.